Presh, real fast. So a brief rain delay before the game to be over. Should be clear skies overhead for the middle game of this three game series. And here is the Yankees starting lineup under manager Aaron Boone. It starts with Aaron Hicks and then Aaron Judge who got the day off yesterday. Giancarlo Stanton drove in the Yankees only run. A good start for him. He is the D.H. batting fourth and Jose Trevino the new Yankee backup catcher will bat night. And they will take their swings off the 27 year old right hander six foot eight two hundred and fifty seven pound Tyler Wells. You remember him from last year former rule five pick stuck with the Orioles all season last year became a big part of that Oriole bullpen towards the back end in some high leverage situations. It was a wonderful year for him first year in the big leagues two and three record with a four one ERA. How about the strikeout to walk ratio sixty five punch outs only twelve walks. Gave up nine home runs and opponents only hit 192 off the right hander Tyler Wells and Tyler looking to rebound from that tough start at Tampa Bay six days ago his first career major league start first inning was good a lot of second inning trouble though through 54 pitches so the hope for him tonight as the starters continue to build up somewhere in the three four inning range and this is that powered by Google Cloud see Tyler Wells pitch Arsenal last year in 2021 a lot of fastballs count the two seamer and the four seamer you know just about 59 percent of the time the slider the change up and the occasional curveball the fastball was the best pitch for him though opponents only hit 176 off that four seam fastball but 197 off the slider and 196 off the change up as well and on defense behind Tyler Wells the Orioles left to right in the outfield Austin Hayes Cedric Mullins in center Anthony Santander back out in right your middle Infielders Jorge Mateo at short Runet Odor over at second base on the corners Ramon Urias back at third Trey Mancini gets to start at first base for the Orioles and behind home plate Anthony Bimboo. Here's your umpiring crew tonight once again only the plate umpire wears light blue in this crew that's Phil Cuzzy. Corey Blazer is at first Mark Ripperger over at second and the crew chief Tom Hallion who had a wonky night behind the plate at third Tom Hallion had a strike zone that was not liked by either team and he ended up ejecting Aaron Boone after the game had ended. And of course it ended on a walk off walk by the Orioles Ramon Urias. There is Aaron Boone and his fifth year manager of the Yankees across the way from Brandon Hyde in his fourth year with the Orioles and Urias the walk off hero for Brandon's team. Last night. Orioles last four wins against the Yankees have all been one run games. A lot of close games between these teams the last couple of years. Maybe another one tonight. We'll see. Aaron Hicks to start it and take a strike from Tyler Wells. You know, when Tyler Wells was pretty good against the Rays at getting ahead, he threw 10 batters he faced, first pitch strikes and six of them, but then only second pitches only two of ten for strikes so he gave back that advantage pretty quick he'll want to work ahead and stay ahead against the Yankees on a 73 degree night a good start for Wells a couple of swinging strikes the fastball then the changeup to the veteran Aaron Hicks good news for the Yankees six is healthy seeing the ball well hitting the ball well already has a home run on base in all six of his games with a plate appearance this year. And a ground ball against the shift. The only man there is Urias. He's got to hurry, and it's not in time. No chance to get Hicks, who runs well. An infield single to lead off the game for the Yankees. Oh, an outstanding pitch just cued right off the end of the bat, but the Orioles are swung around in the shift. Urias tries to circle this ball and puts everything he has on it. A nice pick by Mancini, but Hicks gets down the line, and you're right. He's a difference maker when he's healthy. He has not been healthy very often, though. Signed a seven year contract back in 2019 did Hicks and he's played only one hundred and fifty one games because of Tommy John and wrist surgery since then. Yeah, missed the Yankees final one hundred twenty six games last year due to that left wrist surgery. And here's Judge and the big bopper takes a called first strike. Judge was used as a pinch hitter yesterday in the tenth grounded out to third base against Brian Baker. The Oriole bullpen was basically perfect. The only hit they allowed was a ground ball from Stanton that struck the runner Rizzo. 
in the eleventh inning Anthony Rizzo was ruled out. He was the automatic runner at second so Rizzo was ruled out Stanton went to first so the only hit that that group allowed actually moved a runner back on the base pass wasn't even a real hit that's right that's how dominant they were I love the fact didn't walk a batter five or relievers no walks nine strikeouts and the Orioles walked ten times offensively against the Yankees Orioles were just one for 15 with runners in scoring position last night and yet the pitching was so good the defense so smooth that they had enough in the tank to win it late. This is something that's a little bit different for Tyler Wells than last year. You know, when he came in the high leverage situations, not many guys are going to run late in ball games, so they want to run themselves out of the inning. But early in games like this, he will have to control the running game. That's a breaking ball strike. A couple of pitches have looked a little outside the box, but Phil Cuzzy has called them both strikes. And if that's the established strike zone, at least you know it early. Both teams know it early and boy if you're Tyler Wells why would you throw a strike especially up out over the plate stay on on the outside part of the plate. Judge you at nine home runs against the Orioles a season ago takes one to oh. look pretty good if you look at where the first two called strikes were going just an outstanding pitch right there one ball two strikes and I mean just an inch below the outside corner. That slider was so good for Wells last year 197 against the changeup 161 against the fastball only 176 against so the top three pitches all low batting averages. Tyler Wells a rookie rule five selection a year ago through 57 innings in relief. And the Orioles still trying to find out if he's going to be a long term starter or not. Yeah and, and he's in a different role obviously this year he won't be able to go. 100% on every pitch. You know, you, as a starter, you want to try to get through three or four, the goal for him. So you got to conserve some pitches and occasionally some velo from time to time. 96 there to Judge, who fouls it away. I mean, if you'll go back to his last start, Tyler Wells against the Rays, he got in himself in a lot of two strike situations against the Rays, but just couldn't finish. They fought off some tough pitches, they got his pitch count up. And actually delivered a lot of base hits in two strike situations. So that's what he wants to work on today is when he gets ahead and he gets in that two strike count, being able to finish. Six pitch coming to Judge. Hicks still at first. And Judge takes a slider outside. So Wells has been sitting outside here for Aaron Judge, coming off a 39 home run season for the Yankees. Some darker clouds behind us, but we think on track for a beautiful night here in Baltimore. With the rain having passed. 3 2. In the center field from Judge, and Mullins will have to play it on a hop. Got a good jump, but couldn't get to it. And the Yankees have two hits to lead off the game. Well, Aaron Judge can cover the plate. Now, six foot seven, long limbs. This ball. Is right on the outside part of the plate, but look at him lean over the plate and put a barrel right back up the middle. First and second for the Yankees, nobody out. Is that where Tyler wanted that, you think, on a 3 2 count? Yeah, I mean, that's where Bim Boom set up, you know, but that's what you got to be careful of against experienced hitters like when you're facing a Rizzo or you're facing a judge. If you stay in one location on that plate, eventually they will start to lean out over the plate. So I think fastball in for Tyler Wells to keep the Yankees honest tonight is going to have to be established. He's got to make them think he's going to come inside occasionally and then continue to work to the outside part of the plate. Well, two on, here's Rizzo. And there's a fastball down the heart. Yeah, so no trouble getting ahead. He's been ahead of Hicks. He's been ahead of Judge. Remember yesterday the Yankees had the first two on, nobody out in the first. Jordan Lyles wiggled free out of that jam. Wells looking to do the same against the second year Yankee, the longtime Chicago Cup. There goes Hicks. Wells didn't see it until late. His throw to third, though, is in time. The Yankees tried to catch Wells napping. And he caught Hicks in time as New York makes the first out of the game at third. Well, this veteran team, the Yankees, trying to test the youngster, making his first Camden Yard start. Only the second start of his major league career. And they're trying to steal one here. Hicks is off and running. Well, steps off. A nice throw to Arias. And Hicks is out. 
Well done all the way around. Cost stealing pickoff one to five. And a good job by Tyler not to stumble into a balk in that situation or something like that. And now a roll over to second from Rizzo and first and second nobody out turns into runner on third two out very quickly. Yeah, we always talk about communication. You know, communication. You could hear when Hicks took off, somebody yelled step off. And as a pitcher, that's what everybody's got to be on the same page. And when you hear step off, that's exactly you don't look and see. You step off and pick up that lead runner. That's what Wells did. The Yankees made a lot of outs on the base paths last year. That really frustrated the folks in New York. Add one early in the season as Hicks runs right into the out at third. Now two down for Giancarlo Stanton. And the first first pitch ball of the game for Wells a rare sinker for him. Stanton three for five yesterday. Including that batted ball that struck Rizzo. He didn't hit the ball as hard as we typically see but he did bring in the only run for the Yankees on a bloop single in the third. And a swing through a fastball from Wells. Yeah, this Yankee team continues like it did last year to score runs. Only averaging 3.1 runs per game so far the, this year. That's 12th best, and that's a good four seam fastball just above the bat of Stanton. 2017 National League MVP. 13th year in the big leagues, 349 career home runs for Stanton. Home runs to start the first couple of games against Boston this season. Said five home runs career against the Orioles in 19 games. Sixteenth pitch of the first coming from Wells. Two and two. Little well, change up there, huh? So after 94, backed it up with a change up at 88. Watching take it like that ball to be a little bit further down kind of gets away with that one but the arm speed on that one looked just like the fastball. Now can he finish. A 2 2. That's cracked to right field by Stanton. Santander is there and the inning is over. Always oh, hold your breath when Stanton gets it up in the sky, but Wells works out of a scoreless first. Some hot candy clouds. It all adds up to baseball and a beautiful night for it with a 73 degree first pitch for the Orioles and the Yankees. Here's the Orioles starting lineup. And Trey Mancini really enjoys hitting against the Yankees. 11 home runs in his career against New York. Had a hit yesterday. Anthony Santander, two spots ahead of him, has reached base in all seven games for the Orioles this season. And the Orioles will take their swings off of Jamison Ty on 30 years old now. Former second pick overall. Back in 2010, he was traded last year to the Yankees from the Pirates. There's his numbers last year 29 starts. A good season for him, 4.30 ERA. Boy, he had a really good couple of starts against the Orioles last year. The only two times he has faced them, but 11 innings pitched, only gave up four earned runs, struck out 17. And his first start this year, he was pretty good. Five innings pitched, five hits, two earned runs, did not walk a batter, struck out six against the Blue Jays. And tie on one and two on Cedric Mullins. Yankees were not sure Tyone would be back for the start of this season after offseason ankle tendon. Surgery, but here he is making a second start and throwing to the All Star starter. Cedric Mullins grounds one to the right side, grabbed by the second baseman Torres, who makes a terrific play. Labor Torres back at his preferred defensive position after a nightmare year at shortstop. Yeah, and this Yankee defense is much improved from last year. Rizzo makes a difference, kind of for left. And how about Labor Torres? Range it to his glove side, slides quickly on his feet, and a nice stretch. By Anthony Rizzo, because Cedric Mullins can pick him up and put him down, but just a half a step, he is out over at first base. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
Here is Ramon Arias. Rounds one right to third. Josh Donaldson back in the field today. Loads up for a quick second out. Well, here's Jamison Tyone's pitch arsenal. He's got them all. Fastball will be about 94 miles an hour. Curveball, slider, change up, an occasional two seam fastball. And about 4% of the time, he will throw a cut fastball as well. That four seam fastball, a lot of work for him last year. Opponents only hit 199 off of that four seam fastball. It's almost like two different pitchers, Tyon, because he throws four pitches to righties, four to lefties. There's very little overlap with the off speed and the breaking pitches. Strike one to Santander here. We'll only see Tyon throw the slider to righties, the sinker to righties, likely. We'll only see him throw the changeup and the cutter to lefties, and then that four seamer and curveball he'll throw to both lefties and righties. Anthony Santander. The Orioles switch hitter takes ball one. Now, Tyon's best year back in 2018 with the Pirates. Career best 32 starts, won 14 games, 3.2 ERA, and worked 191 innings. Two and one for Santander, who's been seeing the ball very well of late. He's reached base in all seven games after an intentional walk yesterday in the 10th. Into the game third in the major leagues with a 536 on base percentage. And Anthony takes another one look. And this is not what we're used to seeing from Anthony Santander. Most walks in a seven game span in his career. He never had more than four walks in seven games until the start of this season. He's averaging one walk per game. Gotten himself in a lot of plus counts, and he's in one right now. And takes a called strike. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the Anthony Santander we saw the first month and a half, two months of the 2020 season, you know, when he was laying off some marginal pitches, getting counts in his favor. And then when he got pitches to hit, he seemed to find the barrel often. Now here is the Yankee defense behind Tyone. Joey Gallo back out in left. Aaron Hicks in center. Aaron Judge over in right. Up the middle. Isaiah Kiner for left. And Taylor Torres at second. Josh Donaldson back at third. Rizzo over at first. And Jose Trevino behind home plate for the Yankees. A ground ball toward the shift. Torres had to go to his left to get Mullins. He goes to his right to get Santander. Three ground outs and a scoreless first. count tonight not a lot of home runs of the park so far the Orioles have not allowed a home home run in four games they have not done that in Camden Yards in a very very long time and in fact the only home run the Orioles have hit in these four games Cedric Mullins first time I should say to start the season at Oriole Park the Orioles have not allowed a home run in four straight first time at any time during the year since 2016 with a streak that long. This will be a foul ball to start the second off the bat of Josh Donaldson against Tyler Wells. Yeah, Josh Donaldson always been a good fastball hitter. Boy, he had it geared up. He turned 95 around real quick. First year Yankee. Offseason trade with Minnesota. One for five yesterday, couple of strikeouts. That's foul back right under our booth. That was close. Ben's going to go investigate. Did you get it? Here it is. Into the ledge. Ben, look at all the fans that want it. And Ben has tossed it down and nearly drilled a wall. Almost the hit head. somebody. <laughs> Thank gosh they got out of the way. <laughs> uh, your aim ain't what it used to be, my friend. I didn't really aim. I just kind of <laughs> tossed it lightly. I thought somebody would catch it, yeah. but they were actually ducking. And just like blindly tossing the garter up at a <laughs> wedding reception. Yeah, it's stuck in the little railing right below our booth. And now a souvenir for someone. Donaldson out in front loops a changeup foul. Yeah, so Tyler Wells has thrown about three changeups so far, and they all have been a little bit elevated.
And he's gotten away with them so far. But against this lineup, the elevate pitches, you don't typically get away with it. One, two. That's out of play. It has started to rain again. It's drizzling right now. Yeah, we saw Nicole out with her iPad, and that's never a good sign in between innings. Hopefully, this is just a light spell. Two and two for Donaldson. American League MVP, 2015 with Toronto. Time to get out the ponchos. Three and two from Wells. Tyler made his first start professionally since 2018, a week ago. Accepting a couple of spring training starts. The second tonight against the Yankees. And he walks Donaldson to start the second. Predict two will dominate the 2022 season, and you could win $100,000 worth of cash or Bitcoin with MLB Season Pickup presented by FTX. View rules and enter at MLB.com/slash Season Pickup. Rain coming down a little bit harder now. About the last thing any manager wants this early in the season is an early delay to lose a pitcher. Hopefully the teams will push through this. As Joey Gallo fouls a fastball back. Not that the Orioles expect Wells to go terribly long tonight anyway in his second career start. But the bullpen got a lot of work yesterday. Five relievers through, combined for five and two thirds innings. The Yankees had six relievers pitch last night. Gallo to second base. Odor did not field it cleanly. That could have been two. It certainly would have been the lead runner. Instead, it'll just be a 4 3 ground up. Yeah, that ball had a lot of top spin. It looked like at the last second, that last bound, it comes up. Rachi come up, expecting it get down. You see it come up, but he's in front of it. He had squared the shoulder, so he knocks it down. You'd want to get the lead out. At least he gets the out over at first base. Watch this ball pop up. There's a runner, Josh Donaldson, and no doubt it would have been close to being a double play. Neither one of those guys run great. That's the thing about this Yankee team. They are not going to pressure you on the bases a whole lot. We saw Aaron Hicks try to take an extra 90 on Tyler Wells in the first inning. He was picked off on an attempted steal of third base. And not a lot of guys in this lineup that's going to run. Now, right now, the Yankees stolen base leaders are Aaron Judge and the backup catcher, Jose Trevino, at one each. Yep, I mean, they got two on a year. Now, last year they ran a little bit more. You know, they had 63 stolen bases last year. That was 10th best in the American League, but not expected. They're going to bank it. And when you hit 222 home runs, is what they hit last year. Only the Blue Jays and the Twins had more. Meeting from Ben Boom and Odor before no one to Glaber Torres. A lot of home runs in his career against the Orioles, but none in his last 102 plate appearances after he went bananas in 2019. 0 oh 2. That's the fourth longest active streak of any player against the Orioles. Plate appearances without a home run. Alcides Escobar, Malik Smith, and Michael Brantley. None of them known for their power. Torres has been. But since that 13 home run spree three years ago, the Orioles have kept him in the yard. Flicked out of play. Well, that's what the Yankees are hoping, you know, that he can get back to the form he had a couple of years ago. He put up some big time offensive numbers. 
Now he's changed some things at the plate, and we talked about that last night. He's trying to get his legs involved, his lower half involved a little bit more in his swing. Ben Boone selecting the pitch on the virtual piss come on the Ritz band, it looked like, and then flashed a whole bunch of signs manually after that. And down goes Torres. That's where Tyler Wells wants to spot that changeup. That's where you want to throw it, is down. And when you throw it to a right handed hitter, it better be really down. And watch this action. Down and in, almost like a two seam fastball as it moves underneath the bat of Glaber Torres. That's a good changeup. Where everybody's trying to get, right? It's a strike out of the hand. By the time he gets to home plate, it is a ball. Isaiah Kiner Falefa pulls a ground ball to third. Good pick by Arias and a good scoop by Mancini to get out of the inning. Brilliantly done on both ends. Well, you can put Ramon Urias anywhere in the infield you want to put him. How about this play? Comes in, transfer is quick, and how about Trey Mancini on the other end? A nice pick to get the Orioles off the field. Early yet, but the Orioles have graded out as one of the best defensive teams in the American League. By outs above average. They turned a bunch of double plays as well. Good start in the first two innings tonight. Defensively, as Mountcastle swings through strike one from Tyler. Ryan 0 for four strikeout in a walk yesterday. It's two for 16 on the homestand. Does have a couple of walks in there as well. The hits have not come for the Orioles. Only a 196 team average, but a 309 team on base percentage. Yeah, I mean, the Orioles have what scored 14 runs in seven games so far. But you're right, the home base percentage is because of the walks. I mean, 34 walks this year is an outstanding number. Matter of fact, only the Seattle Mariners have more walks than the Orioles. Now Castle yanks a ground ball to Donaldson. Whoa! Rizzo pulled into foul territory on a bazooka from Donaldson. Rizzo is so good over at first base. And they knew when they picked him up that he would make a difference on the offensive side of the ball, but certainly on the defensive side of the ball. Donaldson crow hops it. I mean, he lets this thing go, but watch Rizzo's footwork. Just kind of tiptoes a little bit and keeps that left big toe on the bag as he goes up. Watch him crank up right here. This ball sailed out of his hand, and Rizzo knew it right away, but I mean, barely kept a spike on the bag. So your scorebook right now, if you keep it scored home, is 4 3, 5 3, 4 3, 5 3. Ground out split between second and third for Tyler. Trey Mancini. And a ground ball foul off of third. Well, the frustrating thing for Orioles fans and Orioles players and Orioles coaches is the hits are not falling. The good thing is they are walking. Their most walks to this point in the season since 1985. And the thought from Orioles co hitting coaches Ryan Fuller, Matt Borgschulte, is that's predictive. If you can walk that much, that's great. You want to have a good approach, you want to swing at the right pitches. They'll have a little bit of better luck on batted balls. They've had some bad batted ball luck. They have to hit the ball harder as well. It's not all bad luck, but they are seeing pitch as well. And that's a good start. I just try to get a few more in play. The Orioles have struck out a lot, too. So yeah, I mean, some look, better luck, but also some more contact. They're getting their opportunities. And I know it hasn't been great, but again, we keep going back. You've got to remember the pitching staffs that they have faced so far. You know, we talk about. Tampa Bay, the you know, Rays pitching staff is as good as anybody's, and you get Milwaukee's pitching staff, which was the third best staff in all of Major League Baseball. Then you run right into the Yankees, which has an elite staff as well. So a tough three series so far for the Orioles as far as pitchers they have faced. Orioles after this will go on the road, play Oakland and the Angels, which should be softer matchups pitching wise. Another ground ball to third. Donaldson. This one's a little lower. Anthony Rizzo doesn't know where it's going to go, but he's going to catch it most likely. 
tomorrow it's kids opening day. Kids cheer free all Sundays long. Fans nine and under. Can join games for free at Orioles.com slash kids free. Run the bases after the game. Tomorrow we're going to have young Dylan from Nickelodeon in town. The Easter Bunny face painting for 7,500 fans 14 and under. Get an Orioles poppet toy presented by Wise Markets. All part of our kids cheer free Sundays. Buy your tickets at Orioles.com slash kids. Orioles and Yankees will close the series tomorrow at 105. The former Oriole Nestor Cortez against the current Oriole Bruce Zimmerman. Bruce started the homestand with four scoreless innings on opening day and he will close it tomorrow afternoon. There's Nestor Cortez in the middle. What a year he had last year. There's Bruce Zimmerman. Two lefties will match it up tomorrow. Former Yankee Rudnett Odor is nearly taken out by the shoe tops by his old teammate. Rain has ceased, by the way, it appears. So hopefully that was just a light drizzle in the top of the second. Hopefully it'll stay away. 2-0 to Odor. And a strike from Tyone. A one year signing for Rugnet Odor. Ninth year big leaguer. In the air, shallow center. Connor Phillip is way out there. And he makes the catch in front of Hicks. First out that's not a ground out for Tyone. And we stay scoreless. And we're on a similar track so far. Orioles without a base runner. Yankees have a couple of soft hits and a walk. No score. So we start the third. Kevin Brown, Ben McDonald, Brett Hollander, and our entire Masson team with you on this splendid Saturday night. Jose Trevino, a line drive just wide of Jorge Mateo at short. And the Yankee backup catcher Trevino is on with the leadoff single against Tyler Wells. How about that? Almost 107 off the bat. And I tell you, Tyler Wells got to change a few things. And I love the fact he's getting ahead and he's throwing first pitch strikes, but he has led every Yankee hitter off with a fastball at this point. And it's a veteran team, and if they feel like they can pick up a sequence on you, they're going to start cheating a little bit. You saw Josh Donaldson really get the head out on a fastball. He pulled it foul his first at bat. So look for Tyler Wells to start mixing in some off speed pitches on his first pitch. Eight out of nine first pitch strikes, but this is a Yankee roster. That hits fastballs extremely well. So the second time through now, and right on cue, there's your first first pitch non fastball to change up, though it did miss. Well, I love the fact he wanted to establish his fastball because everything comes off the fastball. But having said that, I mean, this lineup is too dangerous. They will sit on fastball, and you mentioned they can turn around some fastballs. And the good thing about Tyler Wells, even though he was a reliever last year, his minor league career. 50 appearances, 46 starts, and so he's used to being a starter, and he has four real pitches. A couple of good stops by Anthony Bemboom. Schedule has worked out to where Bemboom has caught Wells in both of his starts. With the scouting report on the wristband, makes the selection with his. Keypad, the pitch comm device. And Hicks pops one up on 2 0 oh into the seats. <laughs> Orioles pitchers have talked about how much they enjoy throwing to Ben Boom, throwing to Chirinos. Robinson Chirinos, the other Oriole catcher right now. Talking to Felix Bautista about that today, he says I fully trust any pitch mm -hmm. Chirinos calls. They've had similar feelings about Ben Boom so far. From day one, that's been one of the biggest improvements on this team from the last couple of years. Hicks lays down a bunt against the shift. Wells will let Urias take it. And the play is made by Urias at first, five to three. 
Well, there's your infield communication again. Tyler Wells, 6'8", 260. He bounced on this, but watch him at the last second. He hears Urias call him off. He gets out of the way and just barely. There's a look at that slider just laying it down. Ball elevated. Good pitch for Hicks to bunt. So here's where the Yankees have had their troubles too. Runners in scoring position. Their last five games coming into this game, six for 40. Already tonight so far, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Judge skies one out to right. This thing's carrying back to the wall, and Santander reels it in right up against the fence. Trevino goes to third on out number two. Didn't miss by much, but it missed by enough. Well, that's where Aaron Judge likes to live, especially in Yankee Stadium, because that's a homer all day long in Yankee Stadium. The short porch out in right center field, but this one pushes Anthony Santander all the way back to the wall. That's what Judge can do. Even as big as he is, he's not all poor. He can drive it out that way just as easy. Santander pushes all the way back and on his tippy toes makes the catch. Nothing to it. Anthony's thinking, couldn't you push the right field wall back too, just to make my life a little easier? <laughs> Strike one to Rizzo. Well, the Yankees had runners at first and second, nobody out in the first. Had the leadoff runner on in the second, leadoff runner on in the third. Wells has been in jams all evening long. Trying to get through a third straight. Rizzo swings and misses at the high heater. That's what Tyler Wells can do to you. Not only is it 94 95, but he's got some spin to it, too. High spin rate fastball, so it just stays on plane a little bit longer. And this is what you'll see a lot right here. Swings right underneath the baseball. That's a big bottom to top swing by Rizzo. Rizzo in the left field. A foul ball. Oh, was it close. The Yankees are going to say, go on, no review. Yeah, this one was super close. Take a look at this. And Tyler Wells gets away, I mean, just by about, what, six inches maybe? Maybe a ball width. But that's another elevated changeup. He gets away with it. Wasn't sure if that was a splash of chalk at first. I think it just kicked up a little bit of water that was on the field from earlier. That changeup needs to be down more. He threw the really good one to Glaber Torres. That was his only strikeout of the game, that changeup to Torres. And Rizzo is hit for the fourth time in nine games. Anthony Rizzo hit by a pitch and down 0 and 2. He works his way on for Stanton. Yeah, Rizzo just, he's not going to get out of the way. A lot of big league hitters will get out of the way. Rizzo just doesn't move. This slider's boring right on him. He just kind of sits right there and takes it off the back leg. So, because he's talking to Brandon Hyde right now. Now Rizzo didn't lean into the pitch. Technically, did he make an attempt to get out of the way? No, but he didn't lean into it. You're not going to get called for a strike for that, and the ball clearly hit him. So the inning is extended for Stanton. And ball one buried from Wells. A lot of living on the edge from Tyler tonight. Well, it's been constant traffic so far. Trying to help himself from falling against this heart of the lineup, and Stanton knocks a change up over the screen. When you're hanging change ups typically as a pitcher, what does it mean? What leads to that? 
I think extension. You know, you want to get more extension and really reach towards home plate. But you got to know where to miss, right? When you get up 0-2 and 1-2, you're saying, all right, I'm making a pitch at the bottom part of the strike zone. But if I miss, I know where I'm missing. I'm not missing up. I'm missing down. Forty five pitches for Wells strike to ball ratio better than two to one but some of those strikes have been in the wrong spot. Down the right field line from Stanton that ball is foul two and two. It almost looked like Stanton was sitting on something all speed there because he was late on a two one count. What Stanton's done in his last 10 games at Oriole Park 500 average, couple of homers, six RBIs. Orioles don't mind having a few extra feet in left field when this guy's up. Now Stanton will swing at a breaking ball off the outside corner if you can get it down and get it out there. On 2 1, Stanton was late on a fastball. On 2 2, he takes a slider. So Wells had the same idea as you, just missed it a little bit mm -hmm. too far out. It was a ball out of the hand, right? That's the one he wants to start in the strike zone and then have it leak off the outside corner. It was a ball out of the hand. Stanton didn't even offer it. Now, 3 2 count. Not giving in to Stanton in this situation. No way. Rizzo will run from first. Trevino still at third. And Stanton almost decapitates his teammate. Oh my gosh. Look out. I mean, he hits balls harder than anybody in baseball. And another changeup up out over the plate. How about that? 109 off the bat. And that's Trevino down the line. And look. <laughs> what is he, like 75 feet from home plate? Thank goodness Trevino's only 5'10. He's not going to be so anxious to get down the line on this pitch. Bring out the chain mail. Another 3-2. That's high. Stanton tosses the bat. After the Yankees' second walk, and New York has loaded the bases with two outs. And I love what Ben Boom's doing here, you know. Just going to go out and talk to Tyler Wells. Let him catch his breath in a big moment. Chris Holt's going to now come out. How would pitching coach Ben McDonald handle the situation with what you've seen out of Wells so far? I think this is just a moment to, you know, he's thrown a lot of pitches this inning, got the bases loaded, just let him catch his breath a little bit, kind of reset and go over the, the scouting report on Josh Donaldson and say, hey, look, remember now, he was way out in front of a first pitch fastball. We're going to start him off with an all speed pitch right here, would be my guess. Something of that nature. Maybe he saw something mechanic wise. But I think this is just more about, all right, big fella, let's catch your breath, let's go back to work. We got two outs. And remember, this is only Wells' second major league start. And the first start saw him get knocked out after an inning in two thirds. Yeah, let's not forget, this is a young man who never pitched at Triple A in his career, never made it to that level. To come straight from Double A in a Rule 5 pick after missing a couple of seasons with injuries and had a phenomenal year last year for the Orioles out of the bullpen. Donaldson a ground ball to third. Good pick by Arias. No problem walking the tightrope tonight for Tyler Wells. He's through three scoreless plans for the Oakland series. Tuesday would have been John Means turn in the rotation but John Means was placed on the injured list yesterday with the left elbow strain. We told you yesterday it didn't sound good and today Brandon Hyde said he fears John Means will be out for a long time. He was asked if John Means is going to be Returning the season, so I don't know. Yeah. So it's it, we don't know not, either, but it's not sounding good. I did not like the sound of that. I mean, he said it's going to be a while yesterday, but he reiterated that point today. And when asked that question, I don't know. 
And the fact he's getting second opinions, you know, worries me a little bit as well. You would never know when you look at Sean if he's hurt or pitching a no hitter. He always has that same kind of demeanor. He's in the dugout. They're awaiting more test results, as Brandon said again today. Austin Hayes with a laser to center field, a leadoff single. The Orioles' first base runner of the game. Look out, folks. Austin Hayes heating up. And we see you, big fella. Two for four night uh, last night. Both the balls he hit last night went to the right side. This one right back up the middle at 109. And watch this swing. Fastball, and I mean, that's putting a barrel on one right back up the middle. Nice and flat, short, direct to the ball. So a 109 mile an hour single for Hayes and now a guy who can run about 109 miles an hour Jorge Mateo. Tyler with a look back over his shoulder. Two for 21 start for Hayes. Not three for his last five. Mateo got off to a great start at Tampa Bay. A little bit of a slower go on the homestand. Three for 14 for Mateo with a walk. Squared the butt, took a ball. Jorge Mateo, former Yankee, New York signed him way back when, 2012, January of that year, out of the Dominican Republic. He's seen as one of the Yankees' best minor league prospects until he was traded at the 2017 deadline to Oakland. He lays down a bunt. Going to be tough to get him. Tyone's throw is picked by Rizzo. A great scoop for the out. Boy, and I thought I thought Tyone took too much time to get this ball. I thought for a second there is no way he throws out Mateo at first base. Perfect bunt lays it right down the third base side. But there's Tyone gets it one step. And how about the pick again? Anthony Rizzo is a wizard around first base and he's made a difference on two or three plays already tonight picks us from out of the dirt if that gets by him Austin Hayes very well makes score all the way from first base he upgrades him so much defensively Rizzo well you see what he's done already tonight I mean and, and that's what they needed was a little bit better defense at first base it makes all the infielders better already made three good picks in not even three full innings Anthony Bemboom. One for four with a couple of big late game walks. Including one yesterday in the 11th. In fact Bemboom. Really started the Orioles winning rally in the 11th. Austin Hayes was the automatic runner at second after a line out Bemboom walked against Clark Schmidt. Kelvin Gutierrez walked to Raldis Chapman came in and after striking out Cedric Mullins he walked Ramon Arias. The Orioles won it on a walk off walk first time since pitch counts have been tracked getting back to 1988 that the Orioles won a game on a walk off walk where a player came from down 0 and 2 to win the game with a walk. It was their first walk off walk of any kind since Ryan McKenna against the Marlins a year ago. One two for Ben Boom. Fouled away. Yeah not very often Chapman gets a hitter down 0 2 and can't finish him. That is usually about as white flag a moment as there is in baseball 0 2 against Aroldis Chapman. Well, and, you know, he had walked the bases loaded the night before didn't record it out but then he comes in against Mullins in a bases loaded situation one out and throws three really good strikes and punches out Mullins finally on the slider. So he felt like he was back in the groove and then when he got down 0 2 you're thinking oh it's over. But wasn't it bat by Ramon Arias. 
I think we said at 0 2 at that point against Urias does it look like one of those wild Chapmanites and in actuality it turned out to be there's Ramon already three walk off in his career not many big league at bats to do it either. One was what a fielder's choice one was a walk and one was a base hit. Not your typical array of walk offs. A single in a seven inning game seven inning double header game and the fielder's choice against the Nats last year the walk yesterday. Boom boom pulls the ground ball to Torres. Hayes goes to third on out number two. Well, Jamison Tyon, he just knows how to pitch. I mean, he knows how to use his stuff. Fastball's a good one. It's not high velocity, but he records a lot of outs with it. He's stacked up the ground balls so far tonight. Former second overall pick back in 2010 out of Woodlands, Texas. Woodlands High School by the Pirates. Tyon was the pick sandwiched in between. Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. Orioles and the Nats, the two DMV teams, went three and one respectively. Pittsburgh took tie out. Yankees traded for him last January to an 0 4 Mullins. Yeah, it's been a nice career, too. I mean, a 3.8 career ERA, and 112 starts, 37 wins. I love his strikeout to walk ratio. 615 innings pitched, only walked 161. That's a good number. So better than a three and a half to one strikeout to walk ratio. 2 0 to Cedric, and he did not swing ball three. <laughs> Orioles are waiting for Mullins to get going a little bit. Three for 20 on the homestand does have a couple of big hits but also six strikeouts. Swing away on 3 0 and absolutely electrocuting a baseball. That'll get you going. Cedric Mullins bombs away at his 2 0 Orioles on Mullins' second homer of the homestand. Love it. Skipper Brandon Hyde pushing all the right buttons. He green lights Cedric Mullins on a 3 0 fastball. And I mean, you couldn't have set this one on a T any better than this. How about this? There's your four seam grip right down the middle. And Cedric gets every stitch of that one straight away right field. And he knew it as soon as it touched his bat. 433 feet. My goodness. All five foot eight of them, too. And how about the sound off of that bat? You talk about a no doubt. We've seen a lot of great left handed hitters play in this ballpark and wear this jersey, and the path of that ball. And the path of that swing, you could put it on just about any of them. A comet through the Baltimore night off the bat of Cedric Mullins. Oh, and two for Urias. I love the confidence that Brandon Hyde has in Cedric Mullins. Came in hitting 167, and Hyder turned him loose. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I got that one. Another $500 to our Maryland Lottery fast play contestant of the game, Ingrid Dean. 500 more for every Orioles home run tonight. Cedric Mullins had never put a 3 0 pitch in play in his career. I guess technically he hasn't put one in play. Now he's put <laughs> one well out of play. That's his first 3 0 swing and fair ball. And a dribbler from Urias, Trevino out to get it and end the inning. 
They're waiting for a big blast from Cedric Mullins for the last couple of games, and he provided with authority. 433 for Ced. Flip on him, Cedric. It's 2 0 O's. 33 foot blast. If it was just a little to the right, it would have been a clear Utah Street shot as it was. It was out near the Boogs Barbecue sign, right in line there. Wide of the bleachers. Gives that, the Orioles a 2 nothing lead. That was just a nice, short, compact. Not trying to hit a home run, just trying to put the barrel on it. And now Tyler Wells has a lead. And Tyler Wells misses to Joey Gallo. Yeah, and T. Wells now starting to mix it up. We're not seeing many first pitch fastballs anymore. He's starting to go to the breaking ball to change up a little bit more. Three innings for Wells. This matches the longest outing of his major league career. And with that fact in mind, Mike Bauman is up in the Oriole bullpen. There's a changeup strike. Yeah, and T. Wells can pitch backwards too. You know, he can do that. He can land those off speed pitches in plus counts. I feel like he's 27 going on 47 sometimes, his knowledge of the game. Very mature, you know, for a guy who has not accumulated a lot of innings really in his professional career at all. When you count the minor leagues, especially at the big league level. I mean, last year, 57 innings pitched. He got a total of about 62 innings in his big league career. But you're right, when you talk to him, it's advanced. You know, when you talk pitching to him, he knows his body. And it was a body transformation. You know, he told us the other day, look, how about that pitch? That's just a diving changeup at 87 miles an hour. He told us the other day he was over 300 pounds a couple years ago. He realized he had to get in better shape. Down to about 257. And how about the bottom falling out of that changeup as it works down and away from Joey Gallo? So he started eating a little bit better, working out a little bit more. And then we talked to him last year when the season was just about over. And he said, you know what? I figured out kind of what it's taken to get through a full big league season. I got some more work to do this offseason and he even got in better shape. There's a big looping curveball. Torres was not ready for that. Yeah, that's the old jelly legger. <laughs> Labor Torres' knees buckled on that one. But we haven't seen many curveballs. I mean, that's the pitch that he used only 4% of the time last year. Backs it up with a slider, right? Perfectly placed on the outside corner. So curveball, strike one, slider, strike two. Slow, slow, fast. I always thought that was one of the best sequences in baseball. Two slow pitches and then back it up with a fastball. I'd like to see him throw a good fastball here just above the strike zone. Target is high. The fastball was high. Maybe a little too close to the zone, but Mullins is on the case anyway. <laughs> Orioles fans, you can enjoy the best of Birdland membership with a free one game trial. If you're wondering if you want to become a Birdland member or not, we get a limited time offer for you to preview your experience with the 2022 Birdland membership. It includes two tickets, parking, 25% off concessions and merchandise, and a one game trial gift. Learn more and sign up today at Orioles.com slash membership trial. And if you're a Birdland member, you get to wear your sunglasses at night. There's a strike to Kiner Falefa. But what I love about Tyler Wells, we could talk to him about pitching. He's very advanced. He thinks the game for somebody seemingly beyond his years. And you walk into the clubhouse today, and Tyler's just sitting there in a robe and slippers, just getting comfy. He's a big kid. He came kid. to the ballpark, almost looked like he had a onesie on when he got <laughs> here, you know? Just where's my uniform? Give me my spikes and my glove, and I'm ready to go. I'm impressed with Anthony Bimbo. You know, I'm watching him call pitches. Tyler Wells not shaking a whole lot. But he's mixing up. He recognized the Yankee game plan, and that was to attack first pitch strikes. And he figured it out pretty quick and started mixing in some all-speed stuff on first pitches. He's starting to really change speeds now. And the Oriole catching situation, you know, in a much better 
position than it was in years past. Two two from Wells. Connor Falefa takes a curveball, only the third curveball thrown by Tyler today. There haven't been a lot of head shakes from Oriole pitchers this year. There's been some quick trust developed between Chirinos and Ben Boom and the staff. And Connor Falefa down swinging. Bookend strikeouts in a 1 2 3 4 for Tyler Wells. Well, that's probably going to be in the night for Tyler Wells. He finishes with a punch out. So three strikeouts on the night. Orioles up two to nothing. A whole heck of a lot better than his first. And I love the way he finished. I mean, strikeouts to start the fourth and to finish the fourth. The only inning he had that was a clean inning, but he finished strong, and that's the main point. Anthony Santander gets under a changeup from Jamison Tyone. One pitch, one out in the fourth. So Wells went, what, 64 pitches? So about 10 more than what he threw the last time out. It's going to be a slow build for Tyler Wells this year. Only 57 innings a year ago, and that means only 57 game innings in the last three years combined. Yeah, and, and you think, you know, the Orioles have not said how many innings they want him to get this year, but you think it's got to be around 100, I would guess, maybe 120 at the most. You take two years off, it's tough. 57 innings last year, and they'll build him up, probably double that this year, and that'll be about it. And if they decide to keep him in the rotation next year, then you could see him go 150 innings. Brandon Hyde was asked about that before Tyler's first start. Remember the Nationals? When Steven Strasburg was coming off Tommy John said he's going to pitch this number of innings and we're going to shut him down and they shut him down before the postseason and lost in the postseason that year though they would win the World Series a few years later. Some teams take that kind of approach. Brandon was asked would you do that with Tyler Wells do you want to shut him down at a certain point he said I don't want to his preference is to get Tyler Wells through the full year so if that means maybe limiting his innings in the middle of the year. It sounds like that's what they would do to try to get Tyler into September. Yeah, but you know, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And when you're talking about a young man that's got a bright future, whether it be in the rotation or in the bullpen, he's certainly somebody you're going to see in the Oriole uniform for some time. Two rule five picks sold in court right there. And the idea, that's the main goal for every player, is to stay healthy, put in a full year. Three and two for Ryan. Trey on deck. Tyone to Mountcastle. Strike three, a slider. And Tyone picks up his first strike out of the night. Tyone, a really good year. Boy, this pitch was big for him last year. It's been big for him this year as well. A good slider. Can throw it about just about any count. And CD takes strike one. A strike to trade. Tyone dotting one slider after another. Slow start to the season last year for Tyone. Really pitched well as the year went on. Had a streak where he did not suffer a loss in 15 straight starts. Pitched very well in that spot. 363 ERA over that stretch. Was hurt near the end of the year with a right ankle tendon injury. That was the injury that caused offseason surgery. Came back though for the last game of the season through three and a third scoreless innings. Yankees clinched a postseason berth. A strikeout of Man City here. Back to back punch odds for Tyone. We go to the fifth in Baltimore. O's on top.
Here's Tyler Wells going to work back to back singles in the first inning was able to navigate through that one or showed a good fastball again. We talked about him being able to control the running game early. He did that that helped get him out of the first inning a really good change up but down and in to pick up a strikeout. There's another good change up to Joey Gallo as it ran down and away and then a slider for his third strikeout. There's a look at Tyler Wells going over the iPad and the numbers. He should be pretty pleased about his outing tonight. There's big Mike Bauman. He was impressive in his one game. Picked up the win, two and a third, three strikeouts, one walk. Opponents hitting just 125 off the right hander, Mike Bauman. So this is an interesting spot for Brandon Hyde. He brings in Bauman, who is considered a bulk reliever right now. Multi inning reliever. Jose Trevino takes ball one. There is rain in the area. It's not too much. It looks like possibly a quick heavy patch on the radar. But Brandon Hyde wants Bauman to go a couple of innings in this game. So you hope that Bauman doesn't come into a game and then get knocked out because of an extended rain delay. You want to have Bauman probably throw at least two innings tonight. He's yeah. backing up Wells here in the fifth. And there's some other bulk guys down there. You know, Keegan Aiken has been outstanding, obviously, out of the bullpen in the bulk role. But this Yankee lineup, pretty heavy with the right-handed power hitters, and so you'd like to bring another right-hander in. There's Aiken, who has thrown one strike after another, been excellent out of the bullpen. A tapper from Trevino, fair ball. Bauman's got to hurry. And in time to first. Big Mike bouncing off the mound. Just a swing and bunt. Boy, perfectly placed when we watch Bauman get to this ball. Bear hands it, plants that back foot, and a good throw over to first base. And there's Mancini again. Watch him reach as far out as he can. Let's go downstairs to Brent Hollander. Yeah, Kevin, Brandon High was asked a few days ago with the success early this year of Bauman and Keegan Aiken and with the injury of John Means and Dean Kramer, should the Orioles put Bauman and or Aiken in the rotation? And right now the desire for Brandon Hyde and the organization, at least as it stands right now, they would prefer to see Bauman and Aiken continue to get success in their current bullpen roles. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And, and the, the tendency is to want to bring one of those guys as good as they pitch, but they also you realize how good they have been and how comfortable they are in their roles right now. So why move them? The question is, well, what are you going to do to replace John Means? Just saw Bauman dot the bottom of the box at 98 to Hicks. And a breaking ball inside here. Understand that this is a tough spot for the Orioles. Grayson Rodriguez and Kyle Bradish are still in AAA. And the Orioles estimation not quite ready to join the big league club. Bauman and Aiken terrific so far out of the bullpen. I think a lot of folks see Bauman too Ben. I know you're one of them that look at him look at the stuff look at the delivery and think he profiles very well as a relief. Yeah I, I'm impressed with him this year. I'll be honest last year I was not that impressed because we didn't see this type of velocity. We saw more of the 92 to 94 fastball not what we'd heard on the scouting reports but this year so far in two outings it's been high octane stuff and he almost looks like a reliever. You know he looks like he's comfortable in that role. Power fastball power slider. Well the skies are starting to spit now. Tom Hallion is going to stop is this game. This is some heavy stuff. It does look like hail. It is. You can see it on the field. And Aaron Judge is just going to stand in the box. Aaron's getting pelted by the sky right now. He got his helmet on. into a delay. Aaron's going up to Tom Hallion. I think he wants to bat right now. But it is really coming down hard. My gosh. Look at that. Yeah, those, those are pretty good size hail there. That's Neil running the camera down there displaying the hail size for us. 
And you can see it on the field right now and on the dugout. My goodness. So Nicole and the Grods grew up to get the tarp on quickly. This is not a rain shower. This is a hailstorm. When and it rains, <laughs> it hails. <laughs> So we're going to go into a delay here in the fifth inning. Hope for the Orioles this is not long because again Bauman has only thrown nine pitches. Look at this. Looks like the roads before a snowstorm. These giant salt pellets. <laughs> this old Louisiana rain here. Got to get a hail selfie in. Wow. So a hail delay here in the fifth inning with the Orioles leading it to nothing. We're playing amateur meteorologist which we're very good at doing. Uh, it does not look like a long storm. So this is probably a game that will be finished tonight but. Obviously, I have to get the players off the field right now. Well, there's a weather change coming, and it's starting with this rain. It'll be cool tomorrow, high tomorrow, only like 54 degrees with a northwest wind about 15 miles an hour. So, this is the beginning of the front, and hopefully, it won't last too long. Bills leading the Yankees 2 0. Cedric Mullins has the big blow in the game, a two run 433 foot homer in the third to score Austin Hayes. And Mike Bauman, it appears, will retake the mound for Baltimore. Well, maybe not. Bauman was actually warming up for a while in the outfield. Travis Lakins, though, is going to jog out of the dugout. Yeah, Bauman cranked it up and started playing catch, and evidently didn't feel just right. And Travis Lakins, hurry up, started playing catch, and he got loose in the bullpen, and that's the man he will face first, Aaron Judge. Judge who a couple of minutes ago was standing in the batter's box with nobody else on the field. Judge is antsy right now. He can't wait to get this thing restarted. Judge I don't think wanted the game to go into a delay in the first place. He was talking to Tom Allian when Tom called the game due to a hail delay and Judge will be batting against Travis Lakins not Mike Bauman. It's going to be the season debut for the right hander Lakin senior. Yep, last year 24 appearances. He did get one start. See the ERA a little bit elevated, but had some nice moments last year in the Oriole uniform. 24 strikeouts. Opponents hit 221 off of Travis Lakin Sr. Cut fastball is what he'll use the majority of the time. Fastball after that, curveball and a changeup. So a four pitch mix out of the bullpen. Well, this is tough, Ben. We speculated about this when Brandon Hyde brought in Mike Bauman. We said there was some an extreme weather coming. We didn't know how long it would last. And the Orioles didn't want to burn the bulk reliever. This was going to be a night for Mike Bauman to go two, maybe three innings if things went well. Now they do have a few more well rested relievers in the bullpen. That's the good news because they only get nine pitches out of Bauman tonight. Yeah I mean it's going to stretch the bullpen just a little bit more in the way Mike Bauman threw his first time out this year you wanted to see him go two or three innings that will not be the case as Travis Lakins senior takes the mound. So first outing of the season for Lakins. It comes in the fifth inning and Travis Lakins major league season starts off smoothly with a curveball strike against Aaron Judge. Lakins has pitched twice in Norfolk this year three innings five hits two earned runs two walks and two strikeouts added to the roster yesterday with John Means placed on the injured list as Judge fouls away a Lakins cutter. Tyler Wells four scoreless innings he left five Yankees on base in those four innings three hits walk two struck out three James and Tyone has been very good for New York three perfect innings. But two hits allowed a Hayes single and a Mullins gargantuan homer in the third. Runner at first is Aaron Hicks. He walked against Bauman before the weather delay. Weather delay of 49 minutes tonight. Back underway right around 940 in the evening on this Saturday, the 16th of April. Lakins to judge. 
on the ground and a foul ball just hooked at the last moment wide of the bat. Yeah, you got to be real careful with Aaron Judge. We saw him lean out over the plate his first at bat after a lot of breaking balls away and fastballs away. And touched Tyler Wells for a single. Lakins right now staying on the outside part of the plate with the curveball and the cut fastball. His first major league game since June of last year, Lakins suffered a right elbow injury on June 29th, pitching in Houston against the Astros. It's outside for ball one. Lakins underwent surgery last year repairing an olecranon stress fracture. He couldn't grip his fist. He thought it was an injury that would require Tommy John surgery, but instead it's actually the same injury he had in 2016 and 17. And that's actually good news because it's an injury that Lakins had dealt with before. He said honestly it's probably the best spring training I've had in a long time this offseason. It was re-added the 40 man and the active roster yesterday. And a ground ball foul from Judge and we've seen a couple of cutters and that's been the pitch Ben that we have primarily seen from Lakins. And now his third year with the Orioles. Yeah, about 38 percent of the time, and then of course the four seam fastball, about 36 percent of the time. That seems to be the pitch he wants to do most of his work with is that cut fastball, and it's a good one. But again, you got to keep these Yankee hitters honest by throwing some fastballs on the inside part of the plate. Target is away from Ben Boom, and the pitch is away. Velocity is good right now. The four seamer last year averaged 93 and a half. So 96 is a good sign that the arm and the elbow are healthy for Lakin Sr. Fourth year big leaguer, 421, the career ERA, 62 games. Boston for a year, Baltimore for the last two. And that's outside to judge. Anthony Rizzo waiting. I think he's the only team they've scored more runs than the American League this season. The Orioles. The Orioles had one more last night. Two more so far tonight as Judge sends one foul. Ninth pitch coming after a 49 minute weather delay. And it is low. Ball four. So the tag not applicable at second because Judge walks. Yeah, that's a tough one there. You get Aaron Judge down 0 2 and you can't put him away. He walks it all the way back for a nine pitch at bat and a base on ball. So first and second now with one out for the Yankees. It's been the bugaboo in the big league career of Travis Lakins. 4.7 walks per nine innings. And times called as Hicks goes for a walk. He wanted to shake some dirt out of his pants behind second from the looks of it. The batter is Rizzo. And the pitch is ball one. Did you feel different? I know you were a starter, but coming out after a rain delay, was that a difficult thing to do? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit unusual, but we did it a few times. You know, as long as the delay wasn't too long, you come back out, just get warm back up, see how you feel, and go right back in the ball game. But everybody handles the rain delay differently. You know, some starting pitchers in between cutting up, and others just in the corner by themselves. Ohio State Buckeye Lakins. One and one on Rizzo. 
Swing and a miss. Yeah, Lakins had to get ready in a hurry because of all indications we were watching. Bobman was going back out. I mean, in the outfield, stretching, running, playing a little catch, and all of a sudden at the last second, he shut it down, came back to the dugout, and Lakins started to get loose. Hey, I wonder what happened. Hopefully it was nothing serious with Bauman. Rizzo a ground ball under the glove of Mancini into right field. Picks around third to score, and Judge will go two third. Rizzo brings in the Yankees' first run tonight. A ground ball that just evaded a diving Trey Mancini, and it's two to one. Well, the back to back walks comes back and haunts the Orioles. Anthony Rizzo gets a pitch he can handle, kind of middle part of the plate, and he just shoots it right past Trey Mancini. It almost looked like he went off to Trey's glove. One run comes home. Aaron Judge goes first to third. So the tying run at third. And the batter, Giancarlo Stanton. Getting a little feisty in here. Looked like Lakins was searching to hear the pitch call there. Pitch comm selection from Bemboom. Stanton a major cut and a whiff at the cutter. Well, he took a hack at that one. Steps in the bucket, you know, so it's a little bit of a closed stance, but watch his left foot. Boy, he opens up and just lets it rip. He will ground in a double play some stand because he hits the ball so hard. 22 double play ground outs a season ago. The Yankees grounded into a ton of double plays in 2021. Yeah, it's a pretty flat swing for a guy that hits a lot of home runs, you know, and if you can be down with a slider or down with a fastball, you can create a ground ball. Only the Nationals grounded into more. Yankees grounded into 154 double plays a season ago. Two one. A called strike two. First two strikes have come on the cutter. And Stanton drills one. A gapper to left center field to tie the game at least. Mullins will play it off the wall after a bobble. Rizzo is waved in by Luis Rojas. Mateo's throw, Ben Boom's tag. He's saved. All the way from first to score. Rizzo comes in on a two-run double. It's 3-2 Yankees. Freddy Gonzalez is on the phone to see if the Orioles want to challenge the play at the plate. He's still holding. Well, this ball was laced out in left center field. Cedric Mullins couldn't cut it off. He tries quickly to get it in. You're going to see Mateo with the throw home. Oh, boy, that is close. That is close. And the Orioles are going to challenge. 115 miles an hour off the bat. Did he tag him? I think he did. I think so. I think by that view, Anthony Rizzo is going to be out. They may overturn this one. Ooh, I, I, right there, it's hard to tell is the foot over the plate or not. The Oriole fans certainly think he's out. I'd like the other view better. I am not sure his foot's on the plate when the tag is applied, Ben. I think yeah. See how it's, there. it's his left foot and the left toe comes up and the left toe is see how it's up a little bit right there. I think he's out right there. I think the tag is being applied right there. This crowd is going to go nuts if this call is overturned. Phil Cousy and Tom Hallian are off the headset. He's out. The Orioles win the challenge. And they erase that third run. Mullins to Mateo to Bemboom as the Orioles cut down Rizzo. And if you're a Yankee fan, you have to be wondering about 
The decision from Luis Rojas, the former Mets manager, to wave Rizzo with one out in the inning all the way from first. Well, the Yankees have been struggling to score runs, and they've not come up big at runners in scoring position. So, an opportunity with a ball up against the wall. So, you're okay with that? I mean, process results being different, you think that was a good call yeah, by Lee Strauss? You know, if you're hot and you're swinging it well, maybe you hold a guy up. But, I mean, that ball got up against the wall. Cedric didn't get to it as fast. Maybe a little bit of a bobble out there. I think that was the read. Donaldson drops his bat on a fly ball to right center. It is gone. And the Yankees are going to take that lead. Josh Donaldson goes opposite field. His first Yankee home run. And it's 4-2 New York. Well, that's what the Yankees can do to you. 222 of these last year. Third most in all of baseball, and Josh Donaldson knew it as soon as it touched his bat. He goes out to right center field. And that is the Orioles' first home run allowed by the bullpen and first home run allowed at home this season. All good things must come to an end, including the Oriole lead. Four run fifth for the Yankees. We had live action out there in the fifth inning. Four runs for the Yankees. After the delay ended, Josh Donaldson, the big blow, two run homer. Right after Anthony Rizzo was thrown out at the plate, a call that was overturned on replay. So the Orioles win a challenge, but the Yankees win the inning, have the lead. And Jamison Tyone returns after a 49 minute rain delay plus another lengthy top of the inning. So about an hour, probably not close to an hour, 10. Yeah, because his team, pitch. Yeah, the Yankees were actually hitting, of course, when the rain delay came. So it's been well over an hour. So we'll see if the stuff is still the same for Tyone. Odor out to right center field. Fly ball well hit. Hicks is there, and Hicks will track it down. In July, some of these fly balls are going to look a little bit different, but not in April. Orioles all new flexible ticket bank. Select your plans, 10, 20, and 40 game packs. Choose your games. Choose the seats in which you want to sit. Orioles.com slash ticket bank to make your selection today. So door is over two against his teammate from a year ago, Tyone. And here's Hayes. Tyone's been great tonight. Orioles only have two hits, the home run by Mullins and a single by Hayes. Yeah, Tyone's not made many mistakes. And, and really the 3-0 pitch, I don't think he thought Cedric was going to be swinging 3-0. It was kind of get me over fastball and paid the price for that one. And how about Hayes going the other way? Two hits in the first six games of the year, and now back-to-back -back two hit nights for Austin. Yeah, and again, he is using the backside. Both of his hits last night went in this direction, letting that ball travel. And that's the pitch he's had a little bit of a trouble with, is the breaking ball, especially from a right-handed hitter. Boy, he stays on that one and threw it nicely. So a two-for-four night last night, a two-for-two two night working for Austin Hayes tonight. Here is Mateo. We had the assist on that out at the plate in the top of the inning. And ball one to Jorge. Cedric Mullins will get credited for an outfield assist for starting that relay. Mullins had seven of those a season ago, and that is the Orioles' first outfield assist of the season. They cut Mateo, just got a piece. Mateo Ben we've seen a little rawness in the field but the speed is there and the arm has played the throw is a little up the first baseline but he yep. got it to Ben Boone well what jumps at you is the athleticism you know like you mentioned big arm can really cover some ground we know he can run and I think there's some sneaky pop in this bat too 
I mean, it, it's a sample size. Would he get a little over 100 at bats last year with the Orioles? So just saw him in a sample size. He finished, finished uh, the season strong, had a nice spring training. There's J.P. Sears, the left-hander, getting heated up in that Yankee bullpen. Tail out to center field. That ball's blasted. Hicks in the deepest part of the park is going to track it down. Well, there's your sneaky pop, and then Mateo just hit it on the wrong night with a wind gusting. Yeah, you can hear, you can feel the wind up here. It is blowing in right now. And I'm going to tell you what, Mateo hit this ball about as hard as he could hit one. It sounded good coming off the bat, had the right angle, and he can't believe it. And when it left the infield, I was like, there's no doubt this one's out of the ballpark. But again, it is April. You give it about another two months now. That ball's in the bullpen. Doesn't look very gusty, but we can feel it yeah. coming into the booth right now. 401, the estimated distance there for Mateo. And the Orioles oh so close to tying the game. Then boom started to swing and uh, he held up. Still looks a little in disbelief, Mateo. No, he hit that one. I mean, he got all of that one. But don't be fooled by the flags. I mean, the flags are kind of blowing out toward left center field, but you go stand down on the field and you can feel how the wind swirls here, you know. And I think the warehouse and the other buildings around have something to do with it. So the flags don't tell the total story in this one. Certainly shows you how well Donaldson hit it to leave the ballpark clearly in the top of this inning. First home run allowed at home by the Orioles this season in game number five. Three and zero to Benbu. We've learned one thing about Anthony Benbu and the hitter: it's that he is generally not going to beat himself. Very patient. You know, Brandon Hyde said, look, he made this club, one, because he's a left-handed bat, and two, the way he handles the pitching staff. And he's called some good pitches tonight. And ball four. So Phil Cuzzy does not give the 3-0 close pitch automatic strike. And that'll be it for Tyo. Aaron Boone to the mound. Boy, these are the toughest ones to come out of the ball game if he takes him out right here too. But he is one out away from a potential victory. But Tyone will not get the W here. That was on one swing from Cedric Mullins, one walk and two strikeouts, through 69 pitches. 43 of which for strikes and he'll give way to the left hander J.P. Sears making his second appearance of the year only worked one inning one strikeout has not walked a batter not giving up a base hit J.P. Sears sinker slider about 38 percent of the time so equal usage on those two pitches and a change up about 25 percent of the time. It's time for a powerful connection brought to you by Xfinity Mobile join the millions already saving by adding Xfinity Mobile to their internet. This was powerful, Ben. That's about as powerful as it gets. 3-0 count. Cedric Mullins gets the green light. And he knew it with a little bat flip, and that put the Orioles on top at the time. Two to nothing. Second of the year for Mullins. And now it will be the second game in the big leagues for the rookie and the Fortune 500 portmanteau, J.P. Sears. There's sprinkling of rain right now. 
as Sears wearing number 92 takes them out. The Yankees are retiring uh, Paul O'Neill's number later in the year so you got 92 on the roster you got 97 86 99 they're going to run out of numbers soon these guys they keep retiring everybody's number. <laughs> Be number 102 here before too long. <laughs> Use and fractions. Now batting for the Yankees, number 47 and one third. Third, third. So 92, throw into 31. Go ahead, run at the plate here in the fifth. And said takes one low. J.P. Sears tired all three batters he faced Wednesday's Major League debut. Added to the Yankees 40 man roster this offseason. And missed inside with a breaking ball. Did a lot of South Carolina kids in this series. Jordan Montgomery, Chris Owings, Clark Schmidt. Yeah, that's right. And uh, John Patrick Sears from the Citadel College, lovely Charleston, South Carolina. 11th round pick of the Mariners back in 2017. Second game of the big leagues against the reigning Silver Slugger Mullins, who fouls one right back to the screen. Skipper Brandon Hyde, Aaron Boone on the other side. Boy, Booney was some kind of upset last night when the game was over. He was ejected after the game ended, so it cost him a little money. Sears throws behind at second. He's his back in. You can be ejected even after a game ends, and uh, it doesn't mean anything in terms of your status for that night. The game's over, it means that Boone will have to pay. A fine for the ejection. And he was hot getting on Tom Hallion. Yeah, he's got his, he got his money's worth too. Yep. He chased Hallion all the way behind home plate. I honestly thought for a second that Booney was going to go up the tunnel. Thought uh, Jimmy Tyler in the umpire's room was going to have to hold him back. Mullins hit a home run on 3 0 in the third, and we'll call time before 3 1 here. Yeah, and he had a really good swing at that 2 0 fastball. I mean, right on it, fouled it straight back. Two on, two out in the fifth. And Mullins takes ball four. I think maybe that 2 0 fastball was in JP Sears' mind. Yes. Tried to trick him with the slider, couldn't come up with it. Now base is loaded, two out. There's Ty on. Well, the last time Ramon Arias batted with the bases loaded, some magic happened. Walk off, walk against Araldus Chapman in the 11th inning yesterday. Way inside. There it is last night. Chapman had Urias down 0 2 in a 3 2 count. Carlos Chapman tried to land that slider. He couldn't do it. Austin Hayes scores. And the Orioles with a walk off walk. 2 to 1 victory. A uh, called strike. With the changeup one and one. First changeup of the night so far by JP Sears. Good fastball, breaking ball. Takes a little bit off and lands it right on the inside part. 
Well, he has two for nine career with the bases loaded plus the two walks. Hayes Bembo Mullins the runners. And Arias hits it in the air to right. Judge came in circling back. Judge at the warning track will put it away. Orioles leave him loaded. The Yankees still in front going to the sixth. During the rain delay? That's, that's it. You got me. <laughs> How about that pop? I got toy? stuck on the slide you think a couple the parents times. Parents will have though. enough to pop it toy on the car ride home. <laughs> <laughs> parents will be saying, now we're not going in until you're number 7501. <laughs> That's down the right field line from Torres and 0 and 2. It'll be a really fun day tomorrow. Hope for another great crowd. 32,000 announced last night, 28,000 plus announced attendance tonight. Most of them have stuck around after 75 minutes of weather delays. Labor Torres to short. Mateo scoops it, sets, and throws him out. Good start to the sixth for Travis Lincolns. Isaiah Kiner Falefa, nothing for five in the series. Has grounded out to third, has grounded into a double play to third, and has struck out swinging three times. Connor Falefa was traded to the Twins for about a millisecond in the offseason before the Yankees picked him up as Paul Fry loosens in the Oriole bullpen. Went from Texas to Minnesota and then the Twins immediately turned around traded Connor Falefa and Josh Donaldson to the Yankees for Gary Sanchez. And then Gary Sanchez is up and down tenure in the Bronx. Giorgello went to Minnesota as well. There's Donaldson, who was the big part of that deal. Gave the Yankees the lead with that home run in the sixth. We'll see the Twins in a couple of weeks, by the way. May 2nd through the 5th, Minnesota is here. Carlos Correa in tow. The right field and the first hit of the series for Connor Falefa. He will hold it first. Santander got to it quickly. Now Anthony Santander moving better. Lower half was beat up all last year. He wasn't moving too good. It affected his hitting too. He gets to this ball quick and you know he's got a big arm. Gets it to him. Watch him pivot all the way around the second base here and throws a dart into the cutoff man of the door. He was a Gold Glove finalist just two years ago. Yeah. He just never got healthy last year. Just never was healthy. Talked to Anthony the other day and asked him why he's in such good shape. He said, did you change your diet at all? He said, I stopped eating as much rice. Used to eat platters of rice, and he's cut a lot of that out of his diet. It's helped him feel a lot leaner. Lost about 10 to 12 pounds over the offseason. Well, he's moving again like he did in 2020. I'm doubly impressed, too, with players who got themselves in great shape this offseason when you couldn't have contact with your teams if you're a 40 man roster player for a few months due to the lockout. This was really an offseason where you had to show as much individual discipline as ever before. Well, you know, and players got used to, you know, taking care of themselves. You know, you go back COVID year in 2020 and started spring training. It was all for a while, then back on again. And you had to kind of do your workouts on your own. You work out wherever you could. And as you go through your big league career, you start to figure it out in some ways. I mean, Tyler Wells is a great example of getting the body in better shape. You realize what it takes at this level to try to stay healthy and to be able to perform at an elite level.
One and two for Jose Trevino. I mean, look what Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did last year. You know, lost a lot of weight, got the body in shape, and had an MVP caliber season. Doing it again so far this year as well. I think he lost a little bit more weight this offseason too. Hit three home runs against the Yankees earlier in the week in the Bronx. Trevino down the left field line, a fair ball. Hayes to it quickly. Kiner Falefa to third. Hayes loads up. And behind the plate, Trevino will take second with a double. Second and third after hits from the Yankee eight and nine hitters. And here comes Brandon Hyde. Yeah, another slider. And this is one of the old cement mixers, the one that just kind of backs up and stays up in the zone. And Trevino covers this one right down the left field line. So second and third, one out situation now for the Yankees as the Orioles make a pitching change. Paul Fry will replace Travis Lakins in a 4 2 game. Fry making his fourth appearance of the year. Two and two thirds innings worked. One strikeout, three walks. The walks have been a problem for Paul Fry. The second half of the season last year and so far this year as well. He'll inherit a tough situation. A second and third and only one out. Season debut for Lakins. He leaves having allowed three runs all earned. In one inning, four hits and a walk. Two runners, his responsibility, Kiner Falefa and Trevino, two new Yankees. And the Orioles look like they're going to pull that infield in, try to cut the run off at home plate. Be up to Paul Fry. There's a good look at it. Be up to Paul Fry to create a ground ball. Now, once he gets the two strikes, I think he'll be thinking strikeout at that point, but you got to get there first. Aaron Hicks an infield single in the first a sacrifice bun in the third and a walk in the fifth. The switch hitter from the right side takes a breaking ball strike. A little bit of a change for Paul this year he's thrown his two seamer. As much, it's slightly more than his four seamer slider. In years past, it used to just be four seamer and slider. That's a good start. Backdoor breaking ball, fastball right in on the hands for strike two. And Paul Fry gets going good as command of the fastball in a really good slider. Hicks grounds it a short. Mateo to the plate. Throw. Tag. Out. Second assist at home today for Jorge Mateo as he gets Kyder Falefa. This is exactly why 
You bring the infield in and give credit to Paul Fry. Breaking ball down in the zone. Little three hopper right to Mateo. Squares the shoulders. A good throw to Bim Boom who applies the tag. Nice. Good solid tag too because gone are the days of ball beats runner. Tag looks close out and the play stands with replay review. You got to make sure that thing's in time. First and third for Judge. And a good block by Ben Boom with a runner at third. Yeah, know who was on deck. I mean, Anthony Rizzo can hit, but I like the lefty lefty matchup. Aaron Judge in this situation is not a guy you want to give into here. I don't think Judge is going to see a strike. On base twice tonight. Oh, a little check swing grounder. He did see a strike. Judge golfs it out of play. Just wide of the entrance to the Yankees dugout. Aaron Boone's going to come talk to Phil Cussey about something. Tom Hallion coming in as well. And there's going to be a review here. The players are. Their, their mics are not working. They haven't been for the past couple of days. There have been some issues in Major League Baseball in the first year where umpires were supposed to be mic'd up to the crowd. Not sure. Wonder if maybe they're arguing for catcher interference here. Yep. Yep. Definitely catches interference. But I never saw. Did you see Judge motion anything? I didn't see it. He, he was chatting with Phil Cousy though maybe about that. I mean clearly the bat hits the glove. So that would load the bases for Rizzo. Judge will be awarded first base. This is where you would love it if the umpires' microphones were working. I'm sure some folks in the crowd are a little confused, but first year that umpires are mic'd up, still some technical things to work out. And either way, you said you'd pitch around Judge, and yeah. this essentially I don't think this is the worst walk. thing in the world. No, Rizzo's no walk in the park, but I still like the lefty lefty matchup. What's the spot to attack here if you're fried? Well, the Orioles have had some sex success. Fastballs in on Rizzo, you know. Now, Paul Fry's best pitch is that slider. And there it is. And that's why, you know, a lot of times the scout report says one thing, but you got to pitch at some point in time to your strengths as a pitcher. And if your strengths is that breaking ball, that's what you're going to see Paul Fry go to. Now, he's got to use a fastball, I think. But I think he wants to get Rizzo out with the breaking ball. That one gets away from Ben Boom. Here comes Trevino to score, and it's five to two. A two-seamer slipped away from Ben Boom. Yeah, that's a two-seam fastball, but it's I mean, down in the dirt. Ben Boom tries to keep it in front. And it's just hard. I mean, when you're already on a knee, it makes it difficult to block. A wild pitch uncorked by Fry. That run charge to Lakins. 
who's now allowed four on his accord. Rizzo toward the shift Mancini Fry gets over there in a hurry and ends the inning one more for the Yankees who strand two five two midway through the sixth. Immortalized in the rafters twenty two. Jim will be back next week you're with me for Oakland right yeah I mean, Jim comes in for the Angels series. Orioles head out west after tomorrow and they begin a long road trip four at Oakland three at the Angels then a day off and then three at the Yankees so 10 game 11 day road trip early in the season J.P. Sears to Anthony Santander heart of the Oriole order Santander Mount Castle and Mancini trying to get back into it. After the Yankees have scored five unanswered. Two nothing Orioles into the weather delay. It's been five nothing New York since. There's a strike to Santander. Josh Donaldson's tie breaking two run home run in the fifth. The big hit right now. RBIs from Rizzo with a single Stanton with a double in there as well. Santander hits it well past to diving Donaldson and Anthony reaches base for the eighth consecutive game to start the year. Yeah, came in hitting 316 with one home run one for three night working a little bit out in front here on an off speed pitch but watch him keep the hands back just enough to put the barrel on it. Josh Donaldson can't come up with it. So J.P. Sears sees the leadoff runner reach in his second major league game. Yankees bullpen has been pretty overworked the last couple of nights. So Sears in a spot he might not ordinarily be in. Part of the order and Mount Castle got under it. High into right field not deep. Judge puts it away. Trey has grounded out to third, struck out looking tonight. One for seven in the series. Started to swing and didn't matter. It's in there for a called strike. Jose Hernandez still coaching first in the background for the Orioles. Freddie Gonzalez at third. Orioles regular base coaches are still out due to illness. Tony Mancellino and Anthony Sanders. In the right field for Mancini, a fair ball slicing down, and that will send Santander to third. Second hit of the series for Trey. His seventh hit of the season. And the Orioles will bring the tying run to the plate with one out. Well, just like Austin Hayes using the back side of the field. Letting his fastball travel as long as he could. Inside out swing. So first and third and just one out for the Orioles. And the Yankees will get the bullpen up as Matt Blake, the pitching coach, takes the mound. We saw Michael King bail out the Yankees with a save two nights ago and he may need to bail them out a little bit earlier tonight. Yeah he inherited that bases loaded nobody out situation against Toronto and he got a big strikeout and a double play. A 
We have seen Brandon Hyde pinch hit for Rugnet Odor in lefty lefty spots this year. Maybe a little early in the game for him to do that, especially with one out. You know, when the Yankees have some good right handed relievers later on in the night. Yeah, I think if the Yankee bullpen was fresh and Lou Isaac was ready and Chapman was ready, maybe you see him pitch hit in this situation, but he's thinking that some of these Yankees big time back of the arm bullpens may not be available tonight. Odor career actually gets on base a little more against lefties, though much more power against righties. Yeah, and his career numbers from a batting average standpoint, not that much better against the right handers. Odor the tying run. A Yankee last season. Takes a strike from Sears. And Odor to me, the last few games, I mean, when the season began, he was swinging a lot of first pitches. Like first or second pitch, he was hacking. We noticed him last night taking a few more pitches, trying to work the count, trying to get the count more in his favor. J.P. Sears from Sumter, South Carolina. Same hometown as the Yankee starter last night, Jordan Montgomery. It's the Venezuelan second baseman, Odor. That's a called strike. Yeah, and you get the feeling this might be J.P. Sears' last batter. I don't think J.P. Sears is going to stay in with Austin Hayes, who hits lefties. Really good and been swinging a hot stick the last couple of games. Two base hits last night, two already tonight. One two from Sears. Foul tip strikeout. And if that is it for Sears, it's a great way to go out. Well, we'll see. Yeah, an elevated fastball just to the top of the zone. A foul tip in the glove of Torino. So it'll be the right hander, Michael King, to face Austin Hayes. Tying run coming up when we return. I know you probably could. You get in there. I left that one open for you. I really yes, did. You did. <laughs> and I got every stitch of it, too. <laughs> Well, there's Michael King, 26 years old, drafted back in 2016, 12th, 12th round by the Marlins out of Boston College, making his fourth appearance, one for one in save opportunities. That happened a couple nights ago, a very good ERA of 1.59. He'll use his fastball about 64% of the time, most of which the two seam fastball, curveball, and a changeup as well. Thursday night Yankees were leading Toronto three nothing. Rawls Chapman came in three run lead with Chapman. It's typically a breeze but he walked three in a row. King came in struck out George Springer and then got Bo Bichette to hit a little soft line drive to second which turned into a game ending double play. So King picked up that save first of his career. And now he will try to save the sixth. As he misses to Hayes. Well, Austin's had a great series. Four hits, a walk as well. Scored the game winning run last night on that walk off walk. Has singled to center and to right field tonight. out now Michael King mid 90s fastball like a handful of these Yankee relievers that's a two seamer boring inside we we'll use that two seamer 48 percent of the time that's his main pitch 
Hayes has hit the Yankees very well in his career. And he's got a 3 0 count here. Into the night, 271 average, 354 on base, 529 slugging in his career against the Yankees with six home runs in 24 games. Now will he get the green light on a 3 0 count? Would you give him one? As hot as he is, yes. Took a sinker low. A four pitch walk for Hayes. And that's six walks in eight games for him. Loads the bases for Mateo. Three more walks for the Orioles tonight. We've given Santander a lot of love for his pitch recognition, but Hayes is seeing the ball in terms of balls and strikes as well as we've ever seen. Now Mateo, the former Yankee, inside, and Trevino came up as if he was going to throw to third, but nobody was covering. Well, Mateo gave one a ride an inning ago. Hit a fly ball to the wall in center field, 400 feet away. Mm. First strike for King after five balls in a row just stuck on the corner. And there's the good breaker. Yeah, King tough on right handers because he throws across his body his, where his left foot lands. Watch where he lands. See how he lands more towards the third base side so the ball almost feels right. Especially the breaking ball. It's almost going right at the right handed hitter. And he got him with another. Another bases loaded jam worked out of by King. Yankees lead it after six. Hale and Homer is tonight at Camden Yards. The Orioles and the Yankees in the middle game of three. Yankees have a five to two lead. Cedric Mullins with a long blast in the third gave Baltimore the lead a two run home run. Stanton one of four Yankee runs in the fifth produced by him with a double. And then Josh Tomlinson a tie breaking homer Yankees added one in the sixth for the runs charged to Travis Lakins one to Mike Bauman the Oriole bullpen which had been so good all year is finally roughed up a little bit tonight second best ERA whip in the American League and Fry whoops one past Stanton to start the seven for a that, strikeout that didn't take long three pitches and Stanton is down finishing ball with that good Fastball to the upper part of the strike zone. And you could describe Paul Fry a little sneaky fast. You know, we saw the velo start to tick up for him a couple of years ago. Remember him three or four years ago, you know, 91, 92. Then we started to see some fours and some fives from Paul Fry. This is that set position the last few years. Remember Fry used to start with his hands up high mm -hmm. in the set position and he changed that to start with his hands at the belt he said he mainly changed that to be a little more, more deceptive harder for hitters at second to see the grip and then sort of mysteriously started from the low set position and he picked up a couple of miles per hour on the fastball. Five strikes in a row to start this inning. 0 2 on Donaldson, who will spoil the immaculate inning. Josh Donaldson's first home run as a Yankee came in the fifth. Broke the 2 2 tie. First as a Yankee, 252nd of the former MVP's career. That's hit well to right. Santander is there. <laughs> Orioles fans experience one of Camden Yard's best values in yeah, the Pepsi All Inclusive Picnic Perch.
This offer includes access to our exclusive club level plus this is the good stuff right here. Unlimited food and beverage, hot dogs, ice cream, nachos, Pepsi products, and more. Buy yours today at Orioles.com slash perch. We'll take some hot dogs and ice cream and nachos yeah. and more right now. Got a little popcorn refresher during the hail delay. I saw that. I broke my rule. My rule is I don't eat popcorn during broadcast. It kind of sticks in your teeth, gets a little scratchy, but when it hails on the field, all bets are off. All bets are off. We're raiding the machine. Joey Gallo 0 for 3 tonight with a strikeout. 1 for 8, three strikeouts in the series. And Fry's yanked a couple of sliders and doesn't want to use that baseball anymore. Yeah, like what I've seen so far by Paul Fry. Velo's good. Fastball command better. Slider command better. And it's just going to take a few good outings for him to get the confidence. Up. I mean, he was so good last year, the first couple of months of the season. And if you could just bottle up April to July last year for Paul Fry, you'd have a back end pitcher. And then August, it all came apart. Thought maybe he was tipping his pitches, lost feel, lost command, ended up in the minors. Was not recalled from the 40 man roster at the end of the season. The Orioles just wanted to give him a break. Felt like he had a good off season mentally. He does put on Gallo here, the first man to reach safely against Fry. Couple of tougher outings early in the season against the Rays. If Fry can get through this seventh clean, you feel like it would go a long yep. way toward putting him in the right state. And I think that's all it's going to take. A couple of good outings for him for that confidence to get going. Because there's always demons. I mean, there's always scar tissue there, especially the way his season ended for him last year. You know, got sent down, was hoping to get called back up, never did. Too about the increased level of competition in this bullpen. Orioles have been terrific around him in relief, and Fry good tonight. One inning and two thirds, no hits, one walk. To the stretch we go. Stretch time here. The Yard Yankees and the Orioles in the middle game of a three game series with Ben McDonald, Brent Hollander, Kevin Brown. Our entire massive crew along for the ride through a couple of weather delays today. 26 minutes to start the game, 49 minutes in the fifth inning, 75 minutes of weather delays total as we play deep into a Saturday night. But not too deep into the night for the air <laughs> fiddle. <laughs> But Orioles need some runs. Down five to two as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, some more air fiddle. What's your best air instrument, Ben? Where do you excel? Oh, that's a great question. I don't have many. Maybe air guitar. Simple kind of man. Yeah. There's an air guitar world championship. There is? Yeah, really. I think we can train you for the next year, get you to compete in the air that. guitar world championships. 
How hard can it be? Ben Boom with an airy swing for strike one against Michael King. It's 9 1 and 2 for the Orioles here. Ben Boom, Mullins, and Urias. Wind picking up again. And what's been a blustery night, occasionally wet, and occasionally a haily night. Hailstorm that paused the game for 49 minutes in the fifth inning. Strike two to Ben Boom from King, who came in with a couple of runners on, two outs in the sixth, walked Taze, and then struck out Mateo on some pretty nasty breaking balls. Yeah, he wasn't very sharp against Austin Hayes. Boy, he figured it out against Mateo. Back on top here, 0 2. Alexander Wells, who has been with the Orioles for most of the last week, finally warming in the bullpen, might finally get into a game. For the season debut for the second year big leaguer from Australia. Called up from Norfolk on April the 11th. DJ Stewart sent down. Round out the walk for Ben Boom. Sauk Rapids, Minnesota native. And it takes ball three. There you go. 0 2 to 3 2. And the Orioles continue to have good at bats. They continue to extend at bats and touch on the walks. Nobody in the American League has more walks than the Orioles except for the Mariners. We love a base runner anyway, anyhow, right here. Ben Boom, good cut at 97. <laughs> Iowa Western Community College to start his career. Anthony Ben Boom went to Creighton from there. Mentioned from Sauk Rabbits, now lives in Nebraska. Ben Western guy who's hoping to find a home here in Baltimore. His fourth big league season. Made his first opening day roster. Given the Orioles a lift with some big at bats, some big plate appearances, really with some key walks late in games on the homestand. Seventh pitch against King. Ben Boom grounds it right back to him. King was really a revelation for the Yankees last year, mainly in a long relief role. He became one of their most important relievers. 3.55 ERA, 22 games, six starts, and in the 16 relief appearances, he threw 38 and two-thirds innings. Yeah, he's a guy that they think is going to fit right towards the back end of a bullpen. Jonathan Loisica could very well be the Yankee closer next year. Almost Chapman's contract is up at the end of this year. Mullins a home run in the third, a walk in the fifth. It's robbed by Glaber Torres on a ground ball in the first. Oh, change up so fastball we've seen up to 97. Change up at 88. Orioles looking to rally, get to three and five. Yankees trying to get to five and four. Which would tie them for the American League East lead. Toronto five and four after a home loss to Oakland today. The A's are five and four after they traded off seemingly everybody. The Rays, surprisingly, are only four and five. Tampa Bay lost again to the White Sox today. Boston four and four shut out the Twins. Yankees' first 10 games are against American League East teams. 
Mullins flips the bat head out into right a well hit ball but right at Judge. You know Judge is a better outfielder than what I think he gets credit for. It's a big big arm from the outfield and for a guy as big as he is six eight. 280 something pounds he can move and when he plays center field you put him out in center you go there's no way he could cover ground but he actually he does it easily when the Yankees traded for Joey Gallo last year judge played a lot of center there were some games where the Yankees rolled out Gallo judge and Stanton six five six seven and six six in yeah, the outfield that's what they call the jumbo package <laughs> in the outfield. And they move a little bit better than your typical goal line three tight end set. Strike to Urias, one and one. The Orioles tonight it hasn't really been about runners in scoring position as it's been in previous nights just one for five. First four innings didn't leave anybody on base. Some one two three innings Mullins said the big home run but. The last couple of innings it's been runners in scoring position again Orioles with some two out rallies stranding the bases loaded both times. Rios left them loaded in the fifth. Strikeout here at ninety seven. Good outing by King out of the Yankee bullpen covering an inning and a third it's five two after seven curve and a slider occasional change up and what time is it back in Australia right now because you know his parents are up that'd be early morning huh well what's it say. Current local time in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia is 1.07 p.m. P.m. Afternoon. That's perfect. Yeah. Get yourself some lunch and watch Alexander Wells pitch. That'll play. Second year Oriole. The third Australian born Oriole begins his second year with a team with a slow curveball strike to Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Pretty good for Paul Friday night, inning in two thirds, one walk, one strikeout. And now Wells is one and one on Kiner Falefa. What do you make out of Paul Fry, who certainly needed a good outing? He did. And the command wasn't great, but it was better. And he showed you some good stuff tonight. I thought the slider at times really worked, a couple of good change ups. And he located his fastball pretty good. So, certainly a step in the right direction and a confidence builder more than anything. Connor Falefa off the end of the bat. There's a base hit. Looked like Wills hung a changeup. Yeah, there was a changeup right up in the upper part of the strike zone. That's what the Yankees, you know, they struggled to hit a little bit coming into the season, and the bottom part of the lineup had not been performing very well, but tonight pretty good. Kind of left a couple of base hits. Trevino down in the nine hole, two base hits. Combined four for seven, those two. Yankee bottom of the order struggled yesterday. Yankee six through nine hitters. Or one for 14. Let's check in with Brent Hollander. Yeah, Kevin, before the game, Brandon Hyde said he was close to naming his starter for Tuesday night at Oakland. There was a lot of speculation that it could be Alexander Wells, but if he's going to cover two innings tonight, 
I'm curious if Ben thinks if that eliminates him for Tuesday night start. Well I think it's about pitch count. You know if he covers these two innings and keeps the pitch count down. Yes I think he could go. Now, if he comes in and has to throw 50 pitches I, I don't know if he can answer the bell a couple days from now. Fabinho down the line and foul. So there's not another obvious starting choice in the bullpen as you look at it. Aiken and Bauman are the longer men. Again, Brandon Hyde has said he wants to keep them in the bullpen. Then you have Bautista, Lakins, Baker, Lopez, Tate, and Crable all seem like relievers. Fry, Perez seem like relievers. Maybe you go with an opener in a bullpen game. Wells strikes out Trevino on a slider. Perfectly placed slider. You know, I'm looking at Alexander's minor league numbers. They are really good. ERA below three. Way less hits and innings pitched. Almost a strikeout in inning. So where does the jump need to be because last year for Wells hit pretty hard in his big league debut season. How does he get from the good minor league Wells to being a strong major league pitcher in a second year? that right there. I mean the fastball we know is a mid to upper 80s type fastball but the command of it when he got hit hard he's like no different than a lot of other pitchers he left a lot of balls in the middle part of the plate. But when he gets a slider down like he just picked up the strikeout and he's spotting his fastball on the outside part of the plate and working with a change up behind it he's got a chance. It's just not a lot of room for error with him like he has to be really spot on when he comes in the ball game, especially when he faces a right handed heavy lineup like the Yankees. That slider is the one pitch that really graded out positively last year highest swing and miss rate lowest batting average lowest slugging percentage against. It's a big slow curveball and he's spotting it well tonight gets yeah. ahead of Hicks. He's really good at changing speeds and when he can dump that curveball in there you see it at 73 fastball at 89 so a big difference in between the two. Hicks down the right field line and foul. You talked about extension a couple of times today that's something that is measurable now baseball savant you can measure the extension of a pitcher's arm when they release a pitch his fastball curveball slider and changeup the extension number on all four of those is different which you don't necessarily want that ball is grounded through the left side get back to that in a second base hit for Hicks he's on for the third time tonight. Reason I say you, you, you don't want that, and you, you can probably explain this in, in layman's terms, but a, a deceptive pitcher, you talk about arm action, you want to be releasing the ball at the same point, right? Whether it's a fastball or something off speed. You're talking about the release point towards home plate, exactly. not the release height of it, yep. right? Yeah. Well, for me, the fastball, you're always going to be a little further out with the fastball because when you throw your fastball, that's when you're getting the most extension. Now, your curveball, sometimes you want to think about a shorter arm out in front. So instead of being way out here, I'm thinking about a shorter arm on my curveball. So normally the breaking ball, if you throw a true curveball, the, ex the release point may be a little bit shorter than what it is on the fastball. Now, I think it'd be pretty similar on a slider. And that's kind of where we've gotten now. We can measure the release. The extension out and release height is also important now when it comes to hiding the ball and the spin rates and those kind of things at play as well. Then we will talk to Wells. Sometimes when we talk about hit pitchers who are deceptive or not, well, batters will say, I see the ball well out of somebody's hand. And it can be all sorts of subtleties for batters. Sometimes it is just where that release point is can give you a, a visual clue as a hitter. Wells is trying to. Change the volume on the receiver right now for the pitch com. Again, this is new this year. Probably some folks are watching a game for the first time. New system in Major League Baseball. It's called pitch com. A lot of teams are using it. Catchers have a keypad that they'll place on their wrist or their shin guard or somewhere. They will select a pitch. A pitcher has an audio transmitter in his hat and he can hear the pitch that is selected. 
So Ben Boom can press a button for curveball, and Wells will hear a voice saying curveball in the back of his hat. You don't have to wear an earpiece. You just wear this receiver, and you can actually hear that. We saw Raldis Chapman struggle with the volume of that last night. Do you have to wear a bigger hat? That's what I mean. To fit that in there, do you need a bigger size lid? Not that I'm aware I want to see it. I want, I'm going to go down and find one tomorrow and see what it looks like. Okay. Judge grounds it foul off himself. He's talking to Paul Fry about this before the game. Every Oriole pitcher has a customized set of pitches and keys for a keypad. So it's not a one size fits all thing because people throw different pitches. Paul said for his it's four seam two seam slider and no location and the catcher will select the pitch and then signal for the location of the pitch. But for some pitchers they are up to nine keys on the keypad one will be fastball inside one will be fastball outside so it's specific to the pitcher. That makes sense. I mean, I guess everybody's a little bit different. So some just call out what pitch it is, others call out the pitch and the location. And I'm guessing there's pitch out on there somewhere. It's a good question. I wonder if there is pitch out on there. Judge with a half hearted swing and a second strikeout of the inning for Wells. Yeah, so a strikeout of Trevino and watch this pitch through. Aaron Judge just a little bit of everything. A couple of curveballs, a slider, a changeup, saw one fastball. That curveball's got some nice bite to it, too. So two strikeouts swinging in the inning for Wells trying to keep this a three run game. Strike one to Rizzo Brett you uh, spoke to Anthony Benboom before the game right you have more in this pitch comp system. Kevin he was saying that you can uh, put the location of the pitch uh, along with what pitch to throw but what the talk was today with Chapman struggling last night. How will this work in the postseason it was very loud at Camden Yards last night. 33,000 almost at the ballpark, but put yourself in October baseball. If Chapman struggled last night, what will that be like for a pitcher? It's a great question and something I think Major League Baseball is still figuring out, Brad. You think about stadiums with 45, 50,000. Think about Tropicana Field and all the artificial noise they create in a dome there. Minute Maid Park as well with Houston. Yeah. These enclosed stadiums can it, get very loud. It's definitely going to be an issue, and, I, and I'm sure the volume has turned up all the way already. Four players outside of the pitcher can wear the receiver too. camping in the dugout it has to be players on the field. One of those usually is the catcher because the catcher wants to make sure he selected the right pitch. And if you're the catcher you don't want the volume to be too high because you're crouched right behind the batter. Yeah I would think it'd be your middle infielders and your center fielder and your catcher. Rizzo chops the ball to second. Odor from short right field makes the play. Still a three run game. Job well done by Wells in his season debut. Sit out. <laughs> and that's going to be on the internet. At least folks got to see the flowing custom lining of my suit there. <laughs> You'll know, by the way, I was pointing to the fans on the right, and you completely ignored me and just flipped it down to the people below. Well, everybody wanted it, so yeah. I just tossed it right out in front. Great chemistry there. Great booth synchronicity. That was a foul ball that was just sticking in the railing right below us earlier in the game, which feels like it was about seven hours ago at this point. You made somebody's day with a souvenir. You almost yeah. hit somebody in the head, but you didn't. So you made somebody's day. <laughs> Anthony Santander trying to start a rally in the eighth against Michael King. King is going to be asked to play the role of bullpen saver again for the Yankees, it appears, though there is some action with Clay Holmes.
one and two. Nineteen relief outings over the last two years for King. Nine of those nineteen have seen him go two and a third innings or more, and he's at one and a third going into this inning. If the Orioles are going to rally, this is probably going to be the frame. Part of the order: Santander, Mountcastle, and Mancini. If the Orioles come back tomorrow will be a chance for a sweep if they don't tomorrow will be a rubber match Bruce Zimmerman and Nestor Cortez neither of whom are allowed to run in their respective season debuts first pitch 105 Anthony got a piece of a changeup. Yeah Zim looked really good in the home opener for the Orioles against the Brewers. Just got a piece. You know, we got a good question, by the way. I want to bring this up from uh, Brian Leach on Twitter. We we're talking about Pitchcom. How many languages does it come in? We've been told it's English and Spanish right now, though. Folks in Major League Baseball said they're working on other languages. Japanese, number of Japanese pitchers mm -hmm. in the game. It's grounded back to King. Well, Have we seen this before? I can say he's fielded his position nice the last couple of innings. That one 105 off the bat, one hopper right to him. Of course, always easier on the glove side. If it's on the opposite side, you got no chance of knocking that one down. But King does land in a pretty good fielding position. Michael King will also play the outfield and High school, play basketball, good athlete. He's fielded his position very well. Mount Castle. That gets through the hole past Donaldson and Kyder Falefa. Base hit for Ryan, his first of the game. And the Orioles have a one out base runner in the eighth. First base hit of the series, too, for Mount Castle. 0 for 4 last night, 1 for 4 tonight, and he gets it in the perfect spot. A little slider that sits up in the zone, and Mountcastle circles this one. There's Josh Donaldson going to his left again. Did he get a piece of this one? Nope. So the tying run on deck. Batter is Trey Mancini. Strike one. Former Notre Dame Fighting Irish player against the former Boston College Eagle. Yeah, Trey always talking Notre Dame football now. He'll talk a little football with you. Said the Irish are going to have a big year this year. That's his prediction. Very high on Marcus Freeman, the new Notre Dame coach. He's talking to Ryan Mountcastle the other day, by the way. Learned that Ryan is a huge UCF fan. Lives down in Florida, goes really? to all the UCF games. Didn't go to college, but refers to UCF as we. So he's <laughs> in the thick of it. Said he did a lot of trash talking this offseason at the Outback Bowl when uh, UCF played Florida and finally got the matchup and beat Florida in that game. There are a couple of Florida boys out at first. Mountcastle and Rizzo. I wonder we have BC Notre Dame here. I wonder if that's a baseball rivalry, big football rivalry throughout the years, the Holy War. An old Big East game. BC and the ACC and Notre Dame basically in the ACC as well outside of football. That's up and in. Ooh. 
and it hit the bat. Man. I thought it got his hand at first, but it must have got bat only. Well, Trey's not arguing it. Two seam fastball running up and in. Take a look at it. Right off the end of the bat. Fastball in. Is it going to be slider away? It's going to be fastball away and a base hit for Trey. A two strike pitch he could handle. Two hits for Mancini. And the Orioles will bring the tying run to the plate. There you go. And both of Trey's hits have gone to the opposite field. So a two night hit for him. Fastball 96 elevated. Trey Mancini, those hands are still really quick. So the Irishman takes out the Eagle. And King will stay in there, it appears, to face Rugnet Odor as the tying run. Feel like Rugnet Odor's welcome to the Orioles moment is coming one of these games. Will this be it? Yes, yes for three today. A perfect moment to hit his first home run of the year. But over 30 home runs three times in his career. Still Clay Holmes in the Yankee bullpen, but King soldiers on. His 39th pitch in relief is a changeup strike. There's Felix Batista. Just starting to play a little catch. That was the one you wanted there. We did no door good fastball hitter and he got one right center part of the plate. Now, 96 miles an hour hard to catch up to but that's the one you want a little four seamer. Did you feel like you were at an advantage or disadvantage when you faced somebody who was a recent teammate of yours. Well, if, if you paid attention as a pitcher, then you knew what his strengths and weaknesses are. So I felt like it was an advantage if you really knew who your hitters were and what they like to do. But you knew tendencies more than you did anything, you know, whether he attacked first pitches a lot for first pitch fastball hitter. If you could dump a breaking ball in and get strike one and he wouldn't swing those kind of tendencies players seem to take pretty consistent on those. Odor the tying run. Takes a call third strike. And King wins the battle against his 2021 teammate. Change up at 88 would look like. Yep there's the grip. That ball's got some nice movement because it looks like it's going to be inside. It's almost has the action of a two seam fastball. So you see Odor kind of stood up just for a second. That ball looked like it was going to be on the inside part, leaks it back over. That'll be the end of the night for King. Clay Holmes will come on to face Austin Hayes. Time run at the plate. Three run game, eighth inning. Four innings, four strikeouts, one walk. Opponents hitting 250. Off the right hander Clay Holmes heavy on the sinking fastball 85 percent of the time and a slider about 15 percent of the time so two pitch mix out of the bullpen. Well the Yankees have found themselves ripe with former pirate pitchers one of them started tonight in James and Tyone one of them is their ace and Garrett Cole and another one here for Aaron Boone and Clay Holmes. It was a big acquisition for them last year. Did pitch that well with Pittsburgh. 493 earned run average in 44 games. Went to the Yankees right before the deadline. Pitched to a 161 ERA in 25 games. 34 strikeouts, four walks, and just 28 innings for New York. 
Well this entire Yankee staff has been really good this year. Matter of fact number one staff. In the American League but the relievers have been even better. They entered the today's play with a 1.3 ERA. Second best bullpen ERA in the big leagues and they've gone three scoreless tonight. Holmes to Hayes. A perfect night at the plate for Austin. Two singles and a walk as he takes a burrowing sinker for a strike. Yeah, that's some big time sink and high velocity to go with it. Right handers last season at just 176 against Holmes, 222 slugging. Hayes reaches out, pokes it to third. Donaldson waits for the runner to cross and then throws out Hayes, and the Orioles strand two more. They've left eight in the last four innings, and they trail by three. There. Two weather delays. And John Carlos Stanton hits it high, hits it deep, but caught by Santander. You hold your breath when he puts it up in the air. <laughs> But you know the ballpark the way it's playing right now not to mention the ball being moved back but the way the ball is playing the parks playing right now you don't hold your breath every time a ball gets in the air. It's just simply not carrying like it will a couple of months from now. Brandon Hines talked about that he said I'm a little shell shock still from. You know, miss hit balls going out to left field. With a short left field fence. Obviously, that's been moved back this year up to 26 and a half feet in certain places, and he just feels a lot more at peace during the game. There hasn't been a ball hit over the left field wall in five games. Oh, no. All right, this isn't going to go over the wall. I just a little shell shock, too. That ball's going to bounce into the stands from Donaldson, and it will be a double. Well, Josh Donaldson came in hitting 188. That'll collect his second base hit of the night. The big blow was a two run home run. They capped off a four run fifth inning for the Yankees. Trying to get that fastball in on the hands, and it never really got there. Enter third. I keep thinking that's Clint Frazier, beardless Josh Donaldson. It's hard to recognize some of these guys. I'm still amazed at what Miguel Castro looks like without a beard. <laughs> well, Joey Gallo has really struggled this year, and the Orioles have done a good job with him. One for eight with a Q shot single and a walk in the series. Gallo takes ball one from Alexander Wells. Tuesday starter still TBD maybe a bullpen game maybe Wills can give the Orioles a couple of innings if he gets through this ninth quickly. Maybe somebody up from triple A. Gallo to first. Fielded by Trey for out number two. Donaldson to third. Just in case folks are speculating. It's not going to be Grayson Rodriguez or Kyle Bradish. On Tuesday we're not we're, yet we're assured of that Orioles are very happy with the way they're pitching in Norfolk Grayson especially his first two triple A starts have been awesome but they are still building them up and being very cautious with their young pitchers. Yeah and, and you're probably going to see Bradish at some point first before Grayson just because he had more time at triple A last year. And Bradish is a couple of years older too. 25 years old. First triple A start for him, four scoreless innings this year. Bradish at Norfolk last season. 21 games, 19 starts, 426 ERA, and 105 strikeouts in 86 and two thirds. Yeah I've not seen him in person yet. I mean we saw him down in spring training on TV and he looked really good. Really good. I mean, it's a kind of power stuff that's going to play in the AL East.
Kyle Bradish was part of that Dylan Bundy deal way back when December 2019. Bradish, Kyle Burnovich, Zach Peak, Isaac Matson, four right handers. And if Bradish is with the Orioles, hope and think he could be, that may end up being a very significant deal. 0 2 to Glaber Torres. Heard Mike Elias on the pregame today talking about Grayson Rodriguez. Very pleased with him. Still want to build him up a little bit. Pitch count has been down in the first couple of starts. Pitch count was low most of last year after the missed 2020. There's a curveball to ring up Torres looking and a great job by Alexander Wells. Two scoreless in relief. Yeah, he can bend it now. We've seen some good pitches, but how about this curveball? Starts well above the zone and just drops it in there. Orioles need some run. He's fastball and having a talk with pitching coach Chris Hope and a nice job. Should a good curveball, a good changeup, a couple of sliders. He's got to be pleased with his first outing of the year. And who knows, that might set him up for that Tuesday start. Well, the Orioles need three to tie it in the ninth. Clay Holmes will play the role of Yankee closer this evening. Chapman down for the count. Pitching in back to back games. Michael King out of the game. Chad Green has thrown two of the last three nights. And for Clay Holmes, he's in search of his first major league save. Jorge Mateo down 0 2. Boy, I tell you, that's closer stuff, though. Yeah. I mean, you look at the velocity, but forget about that for a second and just watch the movement of that sinking fastball. And when we looked at the numbers and it said 85% of the time, you knew it was a good pitch. Yankees added Tyon from Pittsburgh before the season last year. He pitched very well. Second half, added Holmes at the deadline. He got much better. I'm kind of thinking if the Yankees call, they should just hang up the phone out there in Western PA as Holmes strikes out Mateo. And when you face a guy like this, you, I mean, as much sink as on the ball, you almost want to try to hit a fly ball. You almost want to try to get to the bottom of the ball if you can. But how about the movement and the location of it? Ben Boone takes a strike. Clay Holmes only has. One professional save. It was in AAA in 2019 with the Indianapolis Indians. Ben Boone toward the middle. Torres. And two down. have made 12 outs on the ground tonight Yankee defense has been good and the Orioles are one out away from dropping the middle game of this series well for a while that Cedric Mullins home run swing was reverberating through the ballpark got a 3 0 pitch from Jamison Tyone blistered it to the back of the seats in right. Cedric has hit the ball well today. The line out in the seventh inning had an expected batting average of 730. That's based on how high and how hard you hit the ball. It'll be a hit 73% of the time. He just hit it right to judge. Has a walk as well. And a ground ball dug out to Torres. The Yankees win the second game of the series. And the Orioles will have to try once more for the series victory. Tomorrow afternoon at 105. Orioles go down one, two, three in the ninth. Yankees score the last five and get the comeback win. So 105 rubber mats tomorrow as the Yankees win it five to two. O's extra post game coming up. Let's find out what's on it with Red Hollander. Kevin, thank you so much. Coming up on O's extra, we will hear from Orioles manager Brandon Hyde plus Tyler Wells, who pitched really well in his second major league start. And Ben McDonald, it's all coming your way on O's Extra Post Game.